the flow state, which yeah. means that you're in touch with the higher power. We're not going into religion, right? I'm not going to say God. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to say higher power for different people. And you're flowing and you're the vessel and it's flowing through you and it's flowing through you nonstop. And you're doing these amazing things that you kind of black out. Emilio, the honey badger, Welcome to the Honey Badger Hour. This episode of the Honey Badger Hour podcast is brought to you by the original Clippers Barbershop and Patriot Vodka Official. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Honey Badger Hour. It's your boy, the Badger. And today we're back with a very special guest hailing all the way from the 305. Today we're joined in studio by record producer, songwriter, audio engineer, all right? A 305 legend. We got our man, the big dog in the house, Miami Beatway. Hey, thank you, my brother. Yo. Thank, you, thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. Thanks for coming on, my man. I'm I appreciate excited. it, brother. I'm excited. Hell yeah. Let's get into it. How was your weekend, yo? It, w- it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Um, I went out, took my son to uh, Benihana. And we had some food, and they cooked in front of him. He's never seen that stuff before, so he was like, all he does, he's 15 now, so all he does is eat literally all my food every two hours. I'm like, how are you still hungry? We just came from Benihana's. It's expensive as hell, right? And he's like, he gets home, and he's like, so what's for dessert? And I'm like, oh, my God, here we go. Could I have a sandwich before the dessert? I'm like, oh, my God, bro, that's it. I spent all my money on his food. That's what happens. But he's 15, growing boy. I love him so much, but he does eat all my food. Yeah, at 15 years old, he's in the thick of it. You know, yeah. he's like growing every day. He's probably got to change his clothes all the time. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Exactly. So that's what, I, that's what I did this weekend. I was hanging with my son. Oh, that's awesome, man. And I uh, saw, so how's it been going, brother? So uh, I saw you just had um, some big weekends coming up recently, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you're always in the studio producing, getting all it done. All day long, every day, pretty much. I literally just came from the studio right now. I was working with an artist named Kaysen. Uh We were writing some pop references for... Um, for a couple people and uh i spent most of my days there you know i hop around i was actually going to talk to you about uh flow state because i know they got a jujitsu mat over there they got yoga they've got um you know painting breath work all that type of stuff that's where my other private studio is at that i work at and mostly has a studio inside with all that compound of what i was saying and then the gym and an indoor basketball court no so, way. Yeah, man. So when I was looking at all your fighting stuff and everything that you're into, I was like, oh, man, he would love it over here. So maybe one day you come over there and check it out. Oh, for sure. And they have, like, the studio and the gym all in the same it's all location. In one, it's all in one place. Oh, no way. That's wild. All in, all in one big warehouse. Do they have a coach and, like, a trainer? They do. Yeah. So they have, like, okay, so they have the, the yoga girl that, that teaches. Then they have the jiu-jitsu trainer who, who teaches. And then they have the breath, breath work guy. I think it's the same thing yeah. as the uh, jiu-jitsu ben. trainer. Yeah. Ben, ben. Ben. Yeah. Oh, nice. I never so heard about that more place. Than me. Yeah. <laughs> I go to their breath class. Oh, really? Yeah. There you go. You see? Damn, you do, like, the Wim Hof breathing? Have you ever done the breath classes I, over I, there? I, you know what? I'm scared to. <laughs> Because I I work so much and I'm an insomniac, so I will literally fall asleep and be snoring in there, and everybody will be like, "Yo, there's a bear here. <laughs> what is happening right now? What yeah. is going on? Get this guy out of here. We cannot rest in peace." That's why I've never tried it. I'm scared, literally, of falling asleep. If not, I would, because like I've I've seen them do it right when I'm uh, coming out of the studio when I'm finished working. And I'm like, dang, this really looks relaxing, but I'm just scared I'd fall asleep in the middle of all these people. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then, like, if you get, yeah, because there's, like, a fine line between getting that space where, like, you're relaxed and just breathing and then just passing out. You know? Right, exactly. Have you ever mm-hmm. done, like, yoga and stuff like this? I always fall asleep at the end of yoga class, yo. You do? Yeah, 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 because that's the part where you do the breathing, so. Yeah. I've fallen, I've fallen victim to your biggest fear all the time in okay. those breath classes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> because you're working out all day, your mind is going all day, and then once it relaxes, you kind of, like, fall into this okay you're supposed to fall into this deep meditation mode but me i'm like just so tired all the time that i'll just go to sleep it is what it is yeah exactly oh well maybe one day i'll try it we could try it together let's do it so that if you snore and i snore it'll be fine because yeah. I, I just, it just won't be me <laughs> yeah i'll have your back you know what i'm saying exactly but you might be an easier target you know what i'm saying they might not say nothing to me they might just let me slide with my ears and stuff you know like all right let this guy sleep <laughs> let him sleep he needs it Man, so how did you get into the music industry? Like, you started with producing music or, like, making beats or 
How did you get into this world? Um, so when I was younger, I played, my, my grandmother played organ in the church for 20 years. So she obviously was already there teaching me piano. That's how I got into that. Then I went into like middle school band and started going to competitions for reading notes and sight reading and music theory type stuff, which I barely use anymore now. Oh, really? Because uh, we much. got computers and oh. AI and everything else that you can freaking think of. <laughs> You get chat GPT, I know, right? Everybody, I wish I had that during college. Thanks, guys. I know, right? Yeah. No, but actually, be happy, bro, because we're going to, those guys, those college guys that are going to use chat GPT for everything are going to be useless, you know? I know, right? They're not going to be able to do anything themselves. They're not going to be able to do anything themselves, I think bro. That's, the, that's the, the AI plan. That's what they're planning to do. Take yeah, that's people what I'm out, saying. Like, look how dumb we made them. Bro, the technology makes us dumber. Now I realize it with the GPS. You know, when I move back back to Miami. Um, Wait, which one do you use? The Waze? Do you um, use the Google Maps? Do you I use, use the Google Reg Maps? Okay. Right. Uh, I like ways, but I can't understand the arrows. There's too many roads, you know. Sometimes I always take the wrong road. I know, you know? and there's too many With things ways. on it. Railroad crossing, police officer. Da -da -da -da. Yeah. I'm like, this is crazy. Thank yeah. you for letting me know where the police officer is, but everything else you can kind of move to the side. But that's a game changer. The police officers, I totally forgot about that. I'm yeah. going to have to switch back to ways just yeah, for the police officers. To. And then you can just book it all the time, bro. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> dog? You just be, I could be rolling my joints, smoking weed, drinking coffee, changing channels, not giving a damn. Oh, shit. <laughs> Life in the fast lane. <laughs> Grand the Theft Auto. I'm the, I'm the reason why the Miami driving is the way it is. Dog, the new you know? Grand Theft Auto 7 <laughs> featuring Badger. <laughs> drinking coffee and speeding at the same time. And smoking bowls late. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Why does he never get caught? He uses Waze. Waze. It's a new sponsor Waze. for the podcast. Sponsorship. Let's Holla get at it. us. Holla <laughs> at us. Don't worry. We're, we'll be... Uh, We'll be taking a taxi after this. There oh, wait, you go. Taxis don't exist anymore, right? Ubers. Uber. Uber, bro. Another Uber. fucking program. Did I, did I just show my age? That was bad. What's my age again? What's my age again? Well, I was, that's, I that's was young when that song came out. I was like in uh, high school, yo, I think. Blink-182? No, I think high school. That's like, Blink-182, uh, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, Blink-182. Yeah. That was good. Those are good times, bro. That's the last time yeah. I liked rock music. Nah, that's still... I don't, you, what kind of music you grew up on coming up? Okay, so I did a lot... Uh, so this is what I'll say. Old school rock and roll has like my soul in my heart and also soul music like R and B and blues. But like hip hop is my like logic in my head. You know what I'm saying? So like I grew up on both because hip hop I grew up in, in all of the elements. So like the culture, not just rap. Uh, I used to b-boy, you know, um, used to try to do graffiti even though I sucked at it until I was like, yeah, oh, me too. can't do it. That's not going to work for me. So I break dance a lot at Hot Wheels. I don't know if you remember Hot Wheels. Yo, you break dance at Hot Wheels? Yeah. Bro. Oh, my dog. This is roots. You see this shit? Everybody's intertwined. It's... My boy G, who's my jiu-jitsu coach. Okay. And one of my best friends, he was a break dancer. I had there my boy go. Script on the podcast. Ah, he there was you a, go. He's a writer, and he's still he's still, he's still b-boys to this and day. everybody used to go to the middle, and all the girls would booty dance yeah, and all that. Yeah, like, ah! <laughs> the hand shit that was crazy Fratty coming Fratty coming yeah. I'm coming oh, I'm coming yeah I, that was my days but also at the same time I was listening to corn and I was listening to red hot chili peppers you know what I'm saying stuff like that and then my mom of course is biggest Elvis fan so she's playing Elvis Rod Stewart all this shit non-stop in the car she drive me around I don't got no choice so I'm listening to that fell in love with that part so you know it's a little bit of everything and I know kind of everybody says that that's why I hate that but it's main, mainly hip hop and old school rock and roll me too the I, new school rock and roll I'm, I don't really know too much about to be honest with you yeah me like neither like the Machine Gun Kellys and the I mean I know who they are and I listen to a couple records here and there but like I'm not into it like I was with the old school rock and roll like I'll still listen to Queen now you know what I'm saying I was just listening to Queen earlier Yeah, we were at a barbecue today now, uh, yesterday and I, was, I had that punch, I want to break free that's uh -huh. my dad the Queen uh -huh. rides Queen holds up you uh, know yeah yeah, the new stuff I don't like too much, like the emo rock and stuff like that. Like that's the area that I kind of got out of, like the hipster rock. I yeah. think like 10, 15 years ago I kind of checked out. I think the emo out. is too much for me because maybe okay, when I was a teenager I was like, all right, you know I'm a little emo right now. Fuck the world. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, but yeah, fuck yeah, my yeah. parents. Yeah, but fuck, that's a little yeah, bitch stage. Yeah. You gotta kill that stage I quick know, though. Exactly. You know when I'm you're saying? a grown up now, you're kind of like. I'm not going to get in my car and play this emo-ass shit where I'm sad all the time. Like, who wants to bump in their car going to the club with crying and shit? Yeah, like, I want to go uh, to the band. Yeah. <laughs> ah, exactly. I agree, dog. So that's where I'm definitely at music-wise. Music but, yeah, when I listen to music outside the studio that I do not work on, 
it's mostly all the time soul music, R&B music, pretty much now. Like, I'll actually pay tickets and go see Givey on, you know what I'm saying? Or R&B acts like that type, you know? Yes. Also comedians. That's the only other tickets I'll pay for, comedians. You've been listening, you, you like I, to go see comedians and I stuff like this? I just bought tickets for Hard Rock for, uh, uh, what's his name? Andrew Santigo? And, Andrew Santino, yes. Yeah, Andrew Santino, yes. Oh, I've never seen him before. Oh. I just saw his last special, and I was like, oh, I need to buy tickets for this. Love him. Love him, love yeah. him, love him. But I've seen Kevin Hart like twice live. I've seen George Lopez live. I've seen Joe Coy twice. Um, so I'm very, like comedy to me is a big art form in my eyes. You know what I'm saying? Like I, like it's almost up there with music for me, you know? It's uh, something I respect a lot. Definitely. I realize why I love comedy so much. Um, I used to, I love lyrics when I was growing up. I loved like Eminem, Busy Bone, Bone Thugs and Harmony, like, you know, uh, Notorious, Tupac and stuff like this. But those were all good lyricists in the 90s, right? Of course. So the better lyricists, I always loved it, like Nas and then, um, but back then, it's funny, like I always wanted to be a rapper, but I was like, oh, I couldn't. The guys were too good. I was like, I can never write like that. But nowadays with Little Dirk and Little Jeezy and all these guys, I oh, fuck yeah. these guys up. Yeah, I yeah. some beats, bro. Yeah. Like, no, not beats, uh, some tracks. The badges coming. The you know badges what I'm saying? Badges coming. Badges <laughs> coming. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um but yeah bro, same shit. Like uh I grew up on that same type of music, but comedy and hip hop are very similar, like lyrics, you know, and com- good comedy is good good uh good vernacular, good words, yeah, yeah, good yeah. writing, you know. You're trying to you're trying to um like it it always comes back around. Yes. Like the first verse in a rap song, if it's a story, it'll come back around in the third and like you know, like a commons uh, I used to love her. You know what I'm saying? And at the end, he's like, I'm actually talking about hip hop. And it comes all back around full circle. Just like when the comedian says, you know, in the first five minutes, he got this one joke that right at the end of the whole show, it it's comes call back. Right, call, right, yeah, call back, call and response. Like, comes right back to that type of thing. It's my favorite so, part about comedy right now. Love you know? it. Yeah, love yeah, it. the writing and like getting somebody involved, like getting him on a ride and a good song will put you on a ride. Like a song that you always want to put on repeat. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Red Hot Chili Peppers has a lot of jams like that. You know, we're blessed. I don't know. I you grew up in the 90s? Like, I did. That was the best rock. You yeah. know what I'm saying? When you mentioned Maybe, and I grew up in the 90s. Yeah, that's the shit. We're the last generation of the real ones, I think, bro. Um, Everybody you, else, R.I.P. I, I think know, even right? Zaza doesn't make the cut. No, 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 no. She's too young. Yeah, sorry, Zaza. She's I mean, you're cool because we know you and stuff, yeah, but you don't make the cut. We love you, but you know? you're young. But, see, this is, this, is, this is wisdom right here. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> that's what we call it. This is, these great hairs are wisdom, right? We're not old. We're wise. Exactly. There's a difference here. That's right. That's true. I know some old people that are not wise. Yeah. Oh my I gosh. know some young people that are smarter than old people. It all depends, I guess, now, nowadays. It's yeah. just all over the place, man. Yeah, you it's ever meet crazy some, out here. You meet some old people, you're like, how did you make it this far, bro? Yeah, right. You're blessed you're by God. You're in your 40s, dog? You're blessed <laughs> how by God. How did you go all these years? You see this guy in the front of DM, DMV, don't know nothing. I'm like, bro, I don't know how you made it this far to begin with, you know? Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I saw you were talking about, uh, you were saying R&B, your last album that you had, Away From It All, right? That was a pop album. It was a pop, but it was like a lot of, was a lot of R&B songs or yes, like yes. more different feel? That it has an R&B feel, but it was sped up so to sound more pop for people to dance. The one mm. right before that was called Up Close and Personal. That was uh, went number two on the R&B charts. Right under Aaliyah, rest in peace. She, oh. she put out her greatest hits on the same day that I released mine, but I didn't know that. So obviously from a marketing standpoint, I wouldn't want to try to get in her way or anything like that. I would have chosen a different day, but I actually I just literally did not know. So I ended up getting number two, and uh, she was number one. That one, that's all R&B straight up. Like, not even like no dance. It's just straight up R&B. That one was um, called Up Close and Personal. Amazing. Yeah, I was just... Thank you, Sal. Oh, uh, Plus and Plus. Okay, I've got to check that one out, man. That's awesome, bro. And the pop one is the last one, the Away okay. From It All. So pop is a little bit more faster, a little bit more feel, so people can... That's what pop music is more like dance music, something you can put on and jam out to well, a little bit. I'm calling it pop music because that's the genre that it kind of falls under, but technically poppy, pop music only means popular. So, mm. you know, something can be rock and roll that you don't dance to. Or one of the emo songs that we're talking about could be on the number one charts and it's 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 considered a pop song because it's popular. You know what I'm saying? So popular is the genre. Gotcha, so, gotcha. But, so it's like whatever is like in tune right now, like the people right. that everybody wants to hear. And you know? I was trying to do that specifically with this project because everybody in, in Miami is kind of like, or at least around the industry, they look at us like, oh, they're doing reggaeton and they're doing, they're doing some stuff with Rick Ross and maybe it's, it sounds, sounds Gloria Stefan down there. It's da 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 da. Nobody's writing like Ed Sheeran hits, Bruno Mars hits, Justin Bieber hits, like that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like that's all in in New York and Cali and Nashville. Uh. 
and all these places. So I'm like, all right, let me shed some light to Miami that shows that, hey, we got people who can sing like that down here too. Come buy some songs from us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're not just over here making reggaeton music. Like we do something else. What do you? Th- how do you like the reggaeton music? Are you a fan or like? Uh, I'm a fan when it's in the club and and, and, and and the women love it. I so back in the day when it first started um, coming around. Um, I think that DJ Blast is the inventor, at least to me, DJ Blast is the inventor. I actually did a whole album with him. Those are my people. Shout out DJ Blast. Um, they recognize him as one of the inventors. He's from Puerto Rico. And um, he really got me heavy into it. But before that, before I met him and I was kind of like just hearing it in the club or whatever the case may be, I would see how the girls would react to it. And I was like, oh, love this. But then you go to your homeboys, you know, in the hood and you're hanging out and or you're playing basketball or whatever. Or you're in the car or smoking a joint and nobody's like, put on some reggaeton, dog. Never. You right? get what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> well, but now, no, now it's different. Now Bad Bunny's the biggest thing in the world. And you have all these different things that's that's basically like people will jam out to reggaeton without it being in the club. But when I was younger, it was only played in the club. You know what I'm saying? Or at, or, or, or at your, you know, Cuban grandma's uh, party. You know what I'm saying? they were playing it there and everybody was getting down but now it's literally people are bumping it in their cars everywhere we go it's non-stop it's, it just became even bigger than what it was yeah even my mom bumps it now like my mom is bumping See? bad bunny you know That's bad scary. bunny like in, in the is room, she you know at the saying? club or in no, the she, she just, my mom is a professional my mom just dances in the mirror for hours and hours and hours long you know what i'm saying so that's, that's like her mo you know that's awesome but she loves music but now that's her new thing like the the bad bunnies you know the new jams yeah. So yeah, whatever so, makes them feel good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Whatever makes them you feel know? good. I'm trying to get my mom hooked up with, with a new boyfriend or something. <laughs> I'm like, yo, stop calling me, mom. Get a boyfriend. I'm trying to find stay busy, a boyfriend. I've busy. tried. I've tried. Oh man, but grandmoms are grandma. Are you trying to get grandma? You trying to get grandma yeah, hooked up? Yeah, yeah. My mom is a grandma. That's true. My my we call her. Um, no, he calls her just grandma. She calls me a whole bunch of different names. Yeah. <laughs> Dep- depending on if she's mad at me or not. But no, I love my mom. She's great. And she does she does help me out a lot uh, through my whole entire career, actually. Yeah, because if you don't have supportive parents when you come into, I'm sure just as in fighting as in music, like, oh, you want to be a fighter? Are you fucking crazy? Yeah. Oh, you want to be a musician? Are you fucking crazy? That's what you, you got, know though, what I'm like, saying? Yeah. Yeah, so you have to have supportive parents. Well... It's a tough one, right? Because uh, how do you tell an artist that if they don't have supportive parents? Like I know when I when I when I told my parents, I was like, "Yo, I'm gonna I'm gonna do fighting." They, she didn't even wouldn't have knowledge it. They were like, "Crazy," you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, they didn't even. Was, they were like, "To her, it was shit. just the most crazy thing." But then when I disappeared for like, and then I moved to Asia, and then when I was gone for like four months, and then I didn't ever come back, and I was gonna leave for a month trip, and I called her, and I was like, "Yo, I got a job teaching, you know, like MMA." She's like, "Wait a second. You got a job doing this thing that I thought you were crazy for ever even attempting because she saw my ears and everything and getting, right. getting beat up at the gym, you know? Yeah, of course. So it took a little bit of a turning, you know what I'm saying? But I'm sure a lot of artists have to do with that. It's probably to be a tough thing to tell you, like, you as a parent, do you want your, would you want your, you want your kid to go to school, right? Nah, you know yeah, what I'm exactly. <laughs> do not want my son to go into the music industry. It's crazy, right? No, no, no entertainment industry. Don't yeah. even ever think about being a promoter. Oh, no. Same, yo. Be a chef. A- that would be cool. You like food, don't you? Be a chef. I tell him all the time. He's like, I like eating the food. It's different. I'm like, like food critic. okay, yeah, I know it's different. Food critic. That's pretty hard to get into, right? That must be hard to get into. Yeah, I don't want to be no not critic or nothing. Not you don't want to be a critic or nothing. You don't want to be no job. No fucking influencer, no critic. Either make something or get a job. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't want that I bullshit. Like that. I you like feel that. me? We don't like critics. <laughs> we do not like critics. No, I was just saying, like, but I But we a... do want this no, podcast no. to get straight freaking stars, all as many as you can. What's it called? The uh, Not the critics. The uh, What's the one that they have? Um... Oh, the new job that's like uh, popular that um, foodie. Influence. People know no, the new name. Foodie? People, uh, people know. You ever have somebody say you're a foodie? Like what? Everybody likes food. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. How do you survive? <laughs> that's my hot take. How do you that's survive? That's my hot take. Like oh, I'm a foodie. Like oh, yeah. you like food? Yeah, what a coincidence. What's your favorite food? Pizza. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, no way. That's awesome. So, so what do they do? He brings the food to the restaurant. I don't know. I just feel like everybody's a foodie. Everybody likes food. You know what I'm saying? So. So do I. I agree. That's but, what I'm saying. It's uh-huh. a weird. It's a weird one to say that like that's what you do. You know. Yeah, and the critics with food is, yeah, that's all different. That's all different. That's all up to opinion and so on and so forth. Yeah. But I have said this, and I am strong about this. Like, bad art is bad art, and I know that people are gonna fight me on this, and they're gonna be like, it's oh, oh it's an opinion, and it's hey, how it makes me feel, and it's like, but you ever just seen something bad, or just somebody who's a singer and just like 
can't hear pitch and just doesn't know how to sing and it's really bad and then people will be like yeah but they can learn and you're like listen bro this is not maybe what you should do that you should do something else but then you can't tell people that nowadays because they get hurt and stuff like that but it's like you see when stuff is bad or when people are bad you're like bro no matter if you trained for 10 years from now you would still be bad dude like you just don't have you don't have it you don't have the x factor Everybody knows what the X factor is. It's that thing that when that person walks in the room or when they do their thing, they, they, they're they in touch with the higher power and, and boom, they're in the flow state and they know what to do and what they're doing. And some people, they just don't have it. It is what it is. But people hate me when I say this shit. But I strongly agree with it. Because you don't want to waste nobody else's time, right? That's a wasted life. I would agree. I would agree with you. It's tough, but that's the thing with being an artist. You got to be so crazy that even if you don't got it, like... You gotta be crazy enough, right? I think for every any artist, like whether you got it or not, you gotta be able to. That's a tough one. I don't know. I know what you're saying though, because I, I feel like this, and I do comedy now, and there's sometimes where I'm, I have people, I see people on stage, where I'm like, whoever told this guy to ever even attempt this, you know? Mm-hmm. We're like, yo, sometimes I'm like I, you're yo, wasting I, your time. Yeah, like I bomb a lot, you know? Like I'm not like perfect, you know? And I still make a lot of mistakes, but you gotta lose to win. But, but exactly, but like, but. There has people like you know what I'm saying. There's something there for sure. Like I'm not crazy delusional, but there they is laughed. a lot. Delusional is. They've laughed a couple yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. Like they don't hate me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like at least when people see me on stage, they like yo. They don't hate me. That's a start. But ah, that's a bad start. But um, self self uh, self image is a is um, like it's a self realization is a is a is a is a rarity yes, in this world. A I lot agree. of people don't realize. You can tell from looking at somebody's Instagram posts and shit. Like sometimes you're like, oh fuck, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like social media. Here we go. The social media. How we? Yeah, that's the era we live in now. As an artist, um, you got to be engaged no, like one thousand percent, huh? You don't have a choice, and you know what? It's very difficult. It's very difficult to be like if you uh, actual. Okay, I get it. Your job is to be an influencer and to do all that stuff. I get it. But if your job is something else, like you're fighting and you're always training, you're always training. During your training, are you supposed to stop training and be like, hold on, I got to post this. You get what I'm saying? Like, like that's how I am. I'm in the studio nonstop and then I, I try to do it when I can. And I'm coming out with so many records, like every week I'm recording at least, you know, 10, 20 records a week. And then they're dropping. And when these artists are dropping, sometimes they get mad at me and they're like, yo, B, how come you didn't promote it? I'm oh. like, shit, I haven't seen it yet. I didn't even know it came out because like I'm still in the studio. I'm still at work, yes. you know, and it's difficult. So if I had somebody that would be out there doing it for me, that would be awesome. But then now you go into, yeah, the yeah obviously not just the money, the trusting somebody, the way they're going to promote your brand, the way they're going to put it out. One day, if you give them the control over that, and let's say you pick the wrong person, because a lot of people do what their managers or whatever when they're younger and they're growing up. They're like, hey, my best friend's going to be my manager. My best friend's going to take care of my social media type stuff. People that are not managers are just your best friend or whatever, because real managers exist. We all know that in all different types of sports and, and art and all that stuff. So at the end of the day, if you get somebody real to do it, I would love that. But imagine if you didn't, and then they wrote a caption that was bad or said something on your behalf that you didn't say type of stuff. That could ruin a lot of things. So it's very scary to me. So I keep it where, listen, when I post, I'll get there. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it might be a day too late. I'm sorry, but I'm going to post it. I'm going to reshare it. It's obviously my work, too. You know what I'm saying? It's just I'm still busy working. It, yeah. it, I'm, it is what it is. I'm not stuck, stuck to my phone. I mean, I am and I'm not, I guess. It's hard. I'm, I get stuck to it. I try not to. But I know what you're saying with the having somebody post for you and represent for you. It's hard. And then being an artist and, like, being very meticulous, I'm sure... You know what I mean? Like, do you like you would like things a certain way? And like you're saying, like with the captions, you want to be able to and to have somebody to have the trust for somebody else to do it. It's a lot. You're like, yo, you know, like mm-hmm. I'm dealing with that now with the podcast where I gotta like learn to relinquish power and like, I, you know what I mean? Like getting an editor and stuff. I'm just like, yo, but this cut, like, how come you know when I said this part, you know? But it's like we gotta be able to put the right people in charge. I guess it's tough, man. Well, you already got one of the best over yeah, here. Yeah, we're tell in you the what. game. We're halfway there, baby. Boom. There you go. But uh, yeah, with fighting, bro. Um, you had to we would take i was fighting for one fc and when we do fight weeks they have us go to like um social media meetings and stuff like this telling us how to promote ourselves and i believe uh, it it's a pain though because like yeah when you're getting ready for a fight i would have fight camps where i was like releasing videos and stuff and the videos are getting good traction but then i'm like damn am i really putting in the work you know but does that take away from your focus you got to be able to do it all like you know how they call it the zone yeah you know you want to be in the zone it gets in there a little bit you know for sure but the best in the world can do it like what yeah, yeah, yeah like that sucks 
or like a post or something. You know what I mean? And like, yeah, uh, of course. But you yeah. have to at the end of the day. You have to. That's the thing. Yeah, it's like a whole other game. Cheap plug. We're posting. Yeah, get in there. Get in there. Go <laughs> ahead. Do it. Oh, I was like. <laughs> We'll do it after. We'll do it after. <laughs> we'll get in there. Look, we got his house. I go live. Badger. I just took the. There you go. At least somebody's on top of it. Thank you, Zaza. I'm trying to, uh, man. I'm, I would. I got out of MMA. Like I'm not fighting anymore. I don't want to fight anymore. And now I'm getting into comedy. And now I feel like, oh, I need to do this shit all over again. And even more now with comedy. Like so, with, what? Like with social media. Get and back stuff. on top. Yeah, yeah, like just do doing social media. Now you got to push your comedy on social media, just like you got to push uh -huh. anything else. And I'm like, oh, I don't yeah. want to do this anymore. You know, so podcast too. Now the podcast. So question: uh, When you do the comedy does that mean that you have now separate page than fighter page is it where you had changed your name maybe how does know. that work i don't know dog i'm trying to figure it out right now oh, okay. if you know what to do tell me bro i need to i, I need to I, 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 I don't know what do i do bro I, yeah. i'm in the same boat that's exactly what i ask myself every night before i go to sleep dog i think i think um and i got podcast too bro yeah i know i don't know what to post where <laughs> and when <laughs> whatever there's actually a couple there's actually a couple of uh what is it tweetcaster i don't know if that there might be a newer one out now that you can schedule all of what you're gonna post on every single day of the week basically and yes just have that. it all Hootsie, set up Hootsie or something i just Hootsuite. had one there yeah, you go yeah, yeah. like that Tell me that's that. Tell me that's not awesome. Yeah, no. But what I'm thinking now is like, yeah, I have my honey badger. I have my main account. You know, that's like from my fighting. But I realize when I post jokes and comedy, it's like I'm losing followers. It's losing like, they didn't, I didn't come for this because shit. Because they, they didn't want to see that part. Exactly. Yeah. So then I so did maybe make a, a different name and a different uh, uh, page would would uh, would work. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's really hard. Well. I feel like it's really hard to become something that you're branded as and then all of a sudden try to tell people okay now i'm this now i'm something different yes people are like no you're not yeah. you're a fighter you get what i'm saying that's difficult yeah. but if you start the other page with the other name don't put any fight stuff on there when you go to your comedy shows they might not know that you're a fighter at all exactly that's so, what i would like too you know yeah. it's hard to hide with my something face to and think stuff. about yeah yeah definitely man it's it's a little hard to hide with my face and stuff when i go on stage so i kind of like address the elephant in the room sometimes yeah, you just get it out the way yeah do you have any um the, the funniest comedians do that those there are my you go. favorite yeah. i remember being young and richard Pryor comes out on stage and he's like so i was free basing right and i lit myself on fire and everybody goes ah which it's not a funny thing that's not funny at all. It's just the honesty. You know, it's it's the honesty, and everybody knew it because it was already out in the news. Yeah. We already knew what he did, you know, and then he just kind of addressed it, and that's what you're kind of doing. That's that's awesome. You addressed it in the beginning and move on. Yeah, man, for sure. But it's fun, bro. It's been a good little journey. But damn, going back to you, so segue. Chuka, chuka. You were saying, um, so your your grandma was playing was playing the um, the organ piano in the church, and the, yeah. and, or in the organ. 20 I love years. piano. Oh, wow. And then, so you started with piano. That was like started your first instrument. Started with piano, and then in the band when I was learning uh, music theory, I played flute. Don't make fun of me because flute's cool now. It's all but, right, bro. But Lizzo, when I was I younger, it was not cool, right, for a guy to play flute. It wasn't. But that was the second instrument I played. Um, now, obviously, I play everything on a keyboard in uh, in a computer. You get any any sound. Um, and you do the loop. You can do like the loop. You make your beats like that. Like if you start, yeah, like, I use do, loops to chop them up. Um, I add some piano here. Uh, call it a certain guitar player. I don't play guitar, so I'll call a certain guitar player to come over, play some riffs, chop those up. You know what I'm saying? I write a lot of the songs with my artists, so a lot of the production that I've been doing lately is not just sitting at home and making the beats like by myself. I've been literally making them with the artists in the studio so that we're both married to it. Because if I'm uh, by myself in my house or in the studio or wherever, just kind of creating something for somebody, like. I might be wrong about how they're feeling at that moment. You know, I might be going the whole different direction that I didn't know, and they wanted something different. And so now I'm wasting my time. They're wasting their time. We uh, might as well be in the same room. You tell me, oh, you like this sound? I like this sound? And we're collab. You get me? Yes, there are some stuff that people, like I have a collection of beats where if you want to go through and buy some beats, yeah, I have those. But most of the stuff I'm loving right now is doing everything in the studio with the artist. I had Ivan on the cast, and he was telling me that that's how you guys would vibe out. He said you guys would go together yeah. and kind of like like put it together as you go. And he would like write, time. write as you're putting the beat together sometimes yeah. too. Right, right that there on like, the spot while I'm making the beat. 
That's like that's magic how we happening do it. in the flesh. That's like the real energy, like putting it in, like when you get to that flow state. That's I guess, what I'm right? saying. That flow state, that the higher power is flowing, and then it's flowing through the. Ne- that's how you know, like when you're in a band or you're in, you're in a room in the studio or whatever, and one person's not vibing with the rest, you can tell. You know, you can feel it. You're yeah. like, oh yeah, they're 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 not in the flow right now. You know what I'm saying? They they next time maybe we shouldn't bring them or whatever the case may be. Or yeah. some people just have off days. But yeah, it's all about the flow. It's all about the vibe. All of this. I mean, I know everybody says that, but it really is true, because you know they've got a million people out here making songs, a million people out here making beats. It's how you do it, what you actually have to say, and the vibe of the song. This episode of the Honey Badger Hour podcast is brought to you by the original Clippers Barbershop, located on 14227 South Dixie Highway. Make an appointment today. You can find them on the Booksy booking app or call 305-964-7882. More than 20 plus years in the game. And that's the original Clippers Barbershop. Master Barbers for a Master Fighter. Sometimes we're hearing records nowadays that we don't even know what they're saying, but we love the vibe. We're like, yeah, but it makes me feel nice. There's you a lot know? of music like that, right? How yeah. do, what is that? What do you call that? What do you, what is that behind that? So much good music that wouldn't, they're, or they're not even saying anything or anything. I mean, that we a care lot about. of the people call now mumble rap, but yeah, yeah, I like I mumble love it. rap. I fucking love it. It's fucking, <laughs> I know. it's the best shit to listen to when you're like, you know, agreed. doing that thing, bro. You agreed. know, it's, agreed. <laughs> agreed. it's not very godly, but it's, no. it's got its place in time. It's you know, not. hopefully he'll forgive me for listening. To rap. <laughs> Amen. All right. But yeah, I love it both. So after that, after um, learning the piano and and, and going to the band in in, uh, middle school, I started a home studio in my room. So I basically just had my bed and my studio, and that was it. And I already started that in like 11th grade or whatever. Right after that, I went to college at Full Sail, uh, which is the number second school like under Berkeley for for, uh, music and number one for sound engineering, which is what I was getting my degree in. Where is that at? It's in Orlando. So... Here in Florida, it's not that far. I was able to drive there, get an apartment, and, and since I'm from Miami, I didn't have to come from far. Even oh, though a man. lot of a lot of people come there from out of the United States, internationally, in here, like it was just diverse, super diverse. So I go to school there. Right when I got out, um, they really wanted me to be an intern somewhere, a couple studios here in Miami. I'm not going to name their names, and I kind of denied them all, and I started my own, and then I built up from there. So they were all like. They pretty much tell me, bro, there's no way you can do it. And I did. And I had my own studio there for 10 years where I was just building up clientele, building up the gear, um, recording more and more clients, getting bigger and bigger clients in there. The word started spreading. So then more clients came in until the point where I moved on. And now I'm just freelance. So all of the studios that I work out of are owned by other people. And they, whenever somebody hires me, I go to whichever one they love the most pretty okay. much so i'll work out of any studio but i don't have my own personal studio unless it's at my house that i work only me alone pretty oh, much oh really yeah so i don't own a studio anymore i'm just freelance oh nice man yeah but i did for 10 years yeah it's a pain in the ass <laughs> it is yeah uh what is it yeah what is it like uh, owning a studio there's a lot of th- there's a lot of factors that come into scheduling play that i'm sure people don't know right ass. people breaking gears are oh ass. scheduling scheduling i mean even scheduling now with my schedule is even it's, it's hard too time that shit could go out when you sample whenever you watch movies you always get ideas for to put in like oh i'm gonna use like for songs and stuff or, sometimes yeah sometimes that comes along more from listening to uh, like older records and stuff but yeah, yeah some yeah. movies i do it's so crazy i was watching a movie the other day it's a super old movie i forgot the name of it and this guy's kind of like a spy and he goes he calls the guy i guess he plants a bomb on uh, in like his car or whatever and uh, the other guy's the bad guy and he calls the bad guy and he goes oh allow me to introduce myself my name is and then he goes Psh, he clicks the button and it explodes and i go oh my god jay-z must have watched this movie because one of my favorite lines from him is allow me to reintroduce yeah. myself my name, name is home yeah. hates to the ov and this movie's like from the 70s and this guy says the same exact line but it's an acting line he wasn't rapping you know, allow me to introduce myself. My name is, and then he blows him up. Yes. And I'm like, holy crap. Did Jay-Z it's, watch this or did it just happen? Like, did he steal the line from the movie? Like, I don't even know. So sometimes I can see how, you know, in movies influence art all the time, of course. 
Yeah, there's a famous one from um, which was Carlitos way when he's oh, yeah. when he's loading up the gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm reloading. Well, I'm reloaded. Yeah, you know, he's that's really from, not. Uh, yeah. In the movie, he has no more bullets left. He's trying to fake it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's a popular I love that. one. I love that one. Yeah. That one was like in the back in the day, like in the mixtapes and stuff. You know. The mixtape eras. Yeah. I think that was on Reasonable Doubt. That was Jay Z's first. Yeah, album. yeah, I think so. Yeah, I love that one. Damn, so you're getting into music, so like, and then, um, so you start with, you started writing songs too, or, or you like producing music separately, was, or yeah, like? in the beginning, I was just producing beats. Just, just making, making beats, like Making dope. beats and recording people and mixing. Um, songwriting came a little bit later on in my life, as far as the words and stuff like that. So, the last two albums, wrote a lot of it with the artists, nice. you know. Um, I just kind of like, jot down concepts and poetry that are in song form now and then kind of pitch it to the artist and then we'll go over melodies w with each other so i never really go into the room as a songwriter with the melody already made i'll kind of let like the singer kind of do that part but like the concept of the album i mean concept of the song will already be written so like the poetry of it will already be written and the concept meaning like if the main line is oh i wear my heart on my sleeve you know what i'm saying the rest of the the rest of the the song will be about that and I'll have that concept for the concept for them, and then they start writing melodies. I'll start making the beat, and we can go from there. Uh, okay, if it doesn't okay. work out, it doesn't work out. We change the lyrics, we change the song. If it's not vibing at the end of the day, we throw that shit in the trash and we do it over again. You can't be um, you can't be worried to like just get just rinse and repeat. You can't get worried. You can't. You can't worried to like hold on to something, right? You gotta be like yeah, because if you get stuck when, when you're when you're stuck, it's kind of like. You're gonna be stuck there forever unless some songs you put to the like side and like you come back maybe two months later, three months later. Your li your life has changed. Maybe you're inspired now more because something happened that now you relate to the song more that you couldn't do it back then because you didn't relate to it then. You know, yeah. and then you come back and you listen to it and you're like, oh, I know what to do now. But sometimes in that moment you don't know what to do and you rack your brain over. It. You rack your brain over. Artists stay there and then in the studio for hours and the song does not get any better. It just gets worse and worse. So yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You have to know when to stop yeah, or, or move on. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's definitely. definitely. That's definitely a thing. Yeah, like sometimes you just gotta like put it away and like work on something else. And then when you go back to it with a different work look or a different else. outtake, one thousand yeah, percent. Exactly. Right? So then once I was recording everybody um, around kind of like the, the Miami area, getting the studio popping, finished college, all that stuff, learned the music theory. Then I got to kind of this place where I was like, okay, let me start diving into like sync music, trying to sync my songs on Netflix and movies, stuff like that. And also work with bigger pop artists because I'm only branded as like hip hop. Like people only know mm, me from doing yeah. hip hop. And I love hip hop and hip hop's great, but hip hop's not, the checks are not, doesn't look the same as Justin Bieber's checks. You get yeah. what I'm saying? So I was like, I got a son, I got a family, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to trying to step this up, but I'm so used to making hip hop that how do I go now and, and, and try to make pop and stuff like that? I had to go and do my research, how to make house music, how to make EDM. After I did that, I went uh, twice on the dance charts in Germany. One with uh, in the VIP uh, featuring Two Nice, who's here from Miami. Oh, nice! And another oh, one really? called in your, uh, another one called In Your Rhythm featuring DU Ivan. Both of those went on the charts in in uh, in Germany for uh, uh, dance music, which it was house, it was EDM. But it took me years to even get to to be able to make that because it was it was so, it was like it's a so different, different game, a different level it's of what so you're different doing from making hip hop. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah, it's, it's completely different. It's a ride. Hip hop's kind of like smacks you in the face. This is like a ride. You so it's kind of like their evolution. You know, you started with hip hop. That was your base. That was your thing. But then you wanted to see, like, you see where the money was at, and then uh, you start working on different crafts and learning new, new ways to it's hit. So music, you say it like music. that, right? No, that oh, I want to make more money. Like as an artist, or people are like, <laughs> not a true artist want to make money. It's like, well, it, once you get to the point where you're artists and you start your own business, That's the and point. yeah, it's only you about have to money, make yeah. money. I mean obviously we do it for the art and we do it because we love it and we're talented and god gave us his gift to do it but we gotta eat yeah that's the thing yeah yeah we were just we, this has been a recurring um topic actually in all the podcasts because i always interview fighters same thing with ivan we were talking about it like uh well i mean how hard is it i know for fighters it's really hard because the edu like educating yourself on being able to market yourself right but yeah. i guess with uh, with artists I wonder, like, uh, that's got to be tough, too, finding their lane on, on um, promotions and stuff like that, too, you know? Yeah, well, of course. The yeah. promotion game is extremely difficult for artists. I'll say the 
the number one thing. I mean, is, promotion, but like um, bread, right? Like money. Meaning, yeah, you right? need an yeah. investor. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so that's the start of the promotion. You don't start no promotion until you have the money. But now the artists need to go get the money. And, you know, I, I've, I've said it before. We live in Miami. You can find people here that are rich. I'm sorry. There's a lot of rich people here in Miami. So if you're an artist and you believe in yourself, draw up your business plan, how much money you're going to make, and you know how much the person's going to make back, the how, what's the investment, the numbers, bring it to somebody, say, hello, look, look, I got a couple good songs. I got a couple good songs. I got my I got my uh, my photo shoots here. Look at my photo shoots. I got, I've made these music videos. What do you think about them? They like the product. They like you. They see the numbers and they say, all right, you know what? Here's fifty, a hundred grand. And then you go take that and you put it in. You push it into the marketing. But everybody's trying to do it on their own dollar. You know, at the end of the day, we know how the big business works. These people get investors to the the the, 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 the super rich people and wealthy people don't spend their money. They spend other people's money. It's the way to do you it. You get right? what I'm saying? Come yeah, on, yeah, we know yeah, what's going 100%. on. But the artists are I like, I never knew that. I never knew I that. I gotta put it all in myself because yeah. at the end of the day, if I don't, they're gonna take a percent from me. It's like, okay, well, what do you think about this? What's zero percent of zero, motherfucker? You know, you're right, bro. This is why, like, I never got right? a manager. I never got a manager as a fighter, and it's like same thing. It's always like, but then you end up paying in the long run, bro. Like, you can yeah. pay now, you pay later. You're gonna. It's a tough. But you gotta one, make that decision, right? Like, but hopefully by the second contract, right? You're mm -hmm. already now somewhere in a position where, okay, you might have got a little, uh, uh, um, you know, they might have stole a little bit from more than you than you should have in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But at least now, when you're gonna sign your second contract contract or you could go somewhere else or whatever now that you're famous or you're popping or whatever you have the leverage now now you do something about it from the beginning you didn't have the leverage because you didn't have the money or the fame so i mean it's kind of like the interest into the game like what are you gonna do yeah unless you're born rich and you love something so much and you put your own money into it that has happened that's yeah. happened. People have the people have done that, or rich families that invested into their people. Yeah, that works. Um, that works a lot. Uh, that works a lot. I didn't realize that. You know, you know what I realized? Like when um when I was getting into the podcasting stuff and uh, what I was realizing, I'm looking up. There's a lot of content online. I'm like, what's the difference? Like these people. It's like it's a lot of money in this production, bro. It's like, oh, a lot of these good podcasts, they just have a lot of money because I'm sometimes some of these things I'm listening to, like when I was getting into the game, I'm like, these guys aren't saying anything. And how are they getting all this? But it's like it's a lot of money for all the cameras and equipment and microphones. Uh, 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 this, uh, uh. this is a crazy game. It's like I noticed yeah. like production's a lot of um you need the money behind it, you know? I'm realizing the now. good thing about what you have going on now is you have uh, uh, um like you're not at the ceiling. You still can go more, meaning that at, at one day you might sell you might sell this to Hulu. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, Zaza. You might you might sell this to Hulu. You might sell this to um what's one of those stations on on uh on uh oh God. Freeform? No, not Freeform. I can't remember it right now. But just kind of the same way that Drink Champs, uh, my people EFN, Nori. Yeah, what do they I, got I going on? What I do they got going on? I produced a, a bunch of records for, for both of them. Shout out to them. But, like, Drink Champs got um, signed to Revolt, you know, and got put on TV for P. Diddy's thing. So it started off as a podcast, kind of the same thing you're doing, yeah. but ended up on TV. Mm. So at least you have that. You can still be pitching this as a series. So That's true. You I know, never about that. At the end of the day, you... You still have a lot of avenues that you can go into if somebody was to come in and, and invest a lot into it and then boom put it on the tv series then what are those people going to do they're going to come back and watch all your old stuff and those numbers are going to go back up well, that's the goal what's good is too with this cast when we first started um i've had like a lot of uh like in our first 20 episodes we had a crazy run we started in thailand and um no shit yeah we started i That's started cool i started when i lived in thailand and i just so happened to be there like the best time i trained with like the uh, ufc champion of the world uh, amazing uh featherweight he's the number one goat right now like okay. he's the number one pound for pound so i got to train in a good area where i've had like a lot of good guys on the cast so they want to come back to the old episodes you know awesome yeah heck yeah but it's when crazy you went in thailand works, i you know? heard in thailand it's like you're just walking around and like elephants are chilling and like man i it's thought it beautiful. was like that it's, I, it's beautiful. I heard it's it beautiful. is. It is. I thought it was like that, but it was a little bit too. It was a little bit. Um, when I thought when I got there, I thought I was going to the jungle. Like I thought I was gonna be sleeping in yeah. a hammock and there's gonna be elephants in the jungle. But it was like a little bit modern. That's, it was like second world. It's not third world. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Like you get Wi-Fi everywhere and you don't really need to it's learn Thai. Bad. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. You can get like a little Google SIM Translate. card. Yeah. No, not even most Thai people speak English because well, sure. the areas that you're gonna go, the areas that you're gonna go visit, are vacation spots. Are like yeah, mm -hmm. or, and like yeah. So unless you like go deep into the country, you know. Yeah, got it. So they're used to dealing with foreigners for quite some time now. That's cool. But uh, I've always wanted to go. 
Oh, you never gone? I've never gone. I would definitely want to go there before, like, I would go to, like, China or anything like that. Yeah, like, I would. I'd rather go somewhere that's really beautiful or, like, that I can take in the scenery. Yeah, it's. I don't it, want to go to a populated city with smog. You no, know? no, no. China, bro, Good. China has that. I, I, fought in, I used to fight in China quite often, like, really? almost. Yeah, I've been there, like, 15 times. It's dirty. It's dirty, bro. You get smog. They had, like, so you could check the, you Can't check see the, the air. Sun. Dirty. I've never seen the sun there. I've never seen see? the sun. Only one but province. If, but if you go China. high, if you if you stay high enough in a sky rise or in a hotel there, and you, if you you're high enough, like up 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 up, China? you can look. Well, it just depends on where you're staying. You can look down and see the the the, the thick fog of like on so in bad. the city, and then you can see the sky. No, and then the, you see the fog, and then you, under that's the city. Yeah, the and where the people bad. are at. It's like a layer of freaking pollution it's wild it's crazy you can be blowing your nose and you can see like the brown and stuff after some time yeah um, it's wild shanghai is not bad listen there's some places where it's better you know but uh but yo thailand it's super cheap and you get a lot of bang for your buck so for like for a couple hundred bucks you can have like the like you, you like for a twenty thousand dollar night in south beach you can have for like Oh, for five hundred bucks in Thailand. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know oh, he's saying? talking you some other out. stuff now. You can be balling out, you know. I'm just saying, like, you can have like a good he's time. Like, you you know? either go to Thailand or you go to Colombia. Pick which oh, one you there want. There you go. Oh yeah, very similar. Oh which yeah, 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 yeah. Which People one do you see. want to go to? That's true, actually. I need to go to South America and compare and contrast. Actually, there you go. <laughs> I haven't been. I haven't done the Colombia trip yet. You know. Oh, I have. My I boys got it. set up it was out great. there. <laughs> I love it. I oh, went, really? I went in December. Did you go for music? Have you gone out there and produced? I went for a like... wedding. Oh, no, okay, no, yeah. okay. I didn't go. I, I haven't gone there. That. That yeah, it was beautiful. I stayed like in the freaking rainforest type of stuff. It was it was amazing. It was wow. Awesome. So you went. So you went from hip hop. So you started with hip hop. You moved from hip hop and you start getting into like pop music. I didn't know uh, Ivan made. Uh, he made. So that was a like a rave track. It was a dance yeah, track he it, made with it you was guys. A made? house track. It's called a in house your, track. It's called in your rhythm. And he made the beat or he was rapping on it. We made the beat with uh, the Crush Boys, which are the ones that kind of uh, ca uh, came to Miami and approached us about this idea that they could oh. release our records in Germany. So it was like uh, it was basically all four of us making the record together. Me, Ivan, and the Crush Boys, which is two guys. So nice, man. We did it all together. It was a while ago. Wow. Um, it was dope at the time. I do not know if they still make music anymore, but I think they're just still DJing in clubs and stuff like that. I don't know if they're producing anymore, but back then it was it was definitely an adventure, and it was it was cool to dive into and learn about it. And um, nowadays, when anybody hires me to make house music, it's I already know what to do. I already know how to use the compressors to make everything pump. You know what I'm saying? I know the sounds to pick. I know where to put the drops, so on and so forth. I know that for the DJs in the club, they want a minute and a half before the real song comes in because they want to mix it in with the other song coming in. In hip-hop, we don't do any of that. When we print records, we never think about that whatsoever. Like the DJ and how the DJ's got to count in from the other record to come in. All, most of our hip-hop records just kind of like, boom, boom, yeah, we're already in the song. So like pretty much uh, with the house records, it's kind of like, okay, let me put this whole minute of music in the beginning so that the DJ can mix from the last song of that they're playing into the new song and it seems seamless to you where you're like, whoa, went and from then one song to the next song without any like disturbance. Okay, and then the new song can like kinda it kinda like it builds into it. So every like, 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 track boom boom. Oh, and there's a way to make that so that it is it, 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 it there's a way to do that so that it easily synchronizes they, so the, for the artist and for yeah, the DJ. Yeah, well, they have Serato and they have their programs for that. So, yeah. They can do it by ear as well. Back in the day, obviously, DJs would do it by ear. But, yeah, I think Serato, Tractor, stuff like that kind of syncs it for you now. You've really seen the evolution of uh, the tech in, this, in the game, huh? Making music. Like, it's you've seen wild. just with the AI and stuff like oh, that, right? Oh, my God. No, yeah. This year has been crazy. The new stuff, which I have not... Me, personally, I haven't experimented with it yet. But the uh, whole... Hey, I can just put this plug in on and make you sound like Kendrick Lamar. Like when you're rapping is freaking wild to me. You know what I'm saying? Then they all already started talking about, oh, be careful of who you talk to on the telephone because they could be recording your voice and then use your voice on the AI to talk to the credit bureau, your mom, whoever, da da da, send me money, ba ba bum bum, using your voice because they already recorded it, ran it through the AI machine, and now I'm like, oh, we're going, we're going as crazy. I'm good because all I do is text. I never pick up my phone, so they'll never get me. <laughs> I'm done because I have 72 episodes, so I have over 100 hours. Oh, yeah. 
They can say whatever I They're want. They're taking I've our talked, voice right now. We've talked about everything on here from freaking yeah. conspiracies to like, they got me. I'm done. It's a wrap for you. Uh, who knows we what chat. I've said about China? Yeah, we chat. Oh, my God. I've been shitting on China since I moved back to America, dog. Yeah, you know what I'm that. saying? Damn it. We just dropped that in this episode, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're coming for us. We love your dog. food, though. That's why I'm in Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm in America, bro. But I don't <laughs> think it matters, dog. <laughs> Man. Yeah, we live in a crazy era right now, especially with the... That's crazy that... Yeah, there's deep fakes now. Oh my gosh. Yep, it's it's wild. What about uh, for the rappers, like auto tune and stuff like this? Do you look at a music artist like? I think those are all tools. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's fine. Yeah. So, what do you think? Like, yeah, how does do, you, do, do does that diminish the artist when they use um sound effects or something to enhance I, I their voice? Or? I don't think so. I mean, obviously, that's what I'm there for at the end of the day. Mm. And some like when you hear T Pain's auto tune, it's not the same as when somebody's using a Melodyne or or, or Antares auto tune, which has a function that Melodyne does now too, where you can kind of fix the notes and and have somebody sing perfectly. But at the but not hear the you know sound that everybody kind of gets with it when somebody does vibrato. Um, so, but some people like in reggaeton music, we hear auto, we want to hear the effect of auto tune. In electronic music, sometimes we want to hear the auto tune effect. Also, you could put it very lightly on somebody who is an actual really good singer, and it just fixes it a little bit. That's it, and it doesn't really like. You don't really hear it on them, you know. We can use it like that. All they're all just tools. You can use them. You can use them a little bit. Use them a lot. All depends on what the situation is for the song. What about if you perform live? Would that affect it? You can you can perform auto tune live. Actually, I think one. Yeah. So uh, now, obviously, consoles at uh, big concerts for bigger artists would have like a whole you know pro tool setup or whatever and then they have auto tune built into your microphone right then and there through your chain let's say you're sp playing in a small venue or you're an independent artist in a rock band or whatever they sell ones that are pedals that you push with your foot just like a guitarist so guitar you know like guitar pedals when they're on stage changes the way that their guitar sounds uh. you can do the same thing with your microphone have your microphone run through the pedal press the auto tune pedal when you want the auto tune on and press it again when you don't want it on Wow. So you can do it, and there's two different ways to do it live. But yeah, they're definitely using it live. Been, been, been. So it's been. Just, yeah, there's. Can't wow. believe anything now. <laughs> I know. Kidding. That's what I was like. I'm just kidding. God damn it! What's <laughs> real and what's not? <laughs> we don't know. The question is, are we in a simulation? <laughs> this, no, I, bro. I, I hate that fight. Right. It's that's the Matrix fight, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a tough one, dog. Mm. I always wonder, like, I don't know, like. Because you got guys playing the Sims video game. Are we really just a Sims video game? That could be possible, I guess. I don't believe it. Me, no. Me, personally. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. The thing is, have you ever taken psychedelics? Have you ever taken, like, psychedelics no. or anything like that and felt the, like, the other world or whatever? No. There's something there when you take psychedelics. Yeah. I've always wanted to try um, mushrooms. Yeah. For uh, maybe like micro dosing, like just to help anxiety yeah. and stuff like that, but not to like be tripping balls. Like, nah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in that. They both have their, uh, serp they both have their purpose. If you do the day where you trip balls, you might, you know, that's like tough, you know, depends on your mind too. Like some people I wouldn't even recommend it for, you know, right. but the micro dosing, you'll probably produce the shit out of some music, dog. You'll make some crazy ass beats on a like a little, <laughs> give you a little piece of chocolate and let you get on the... Who knows what you'll make? You'll make some magic, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. I believe that. The, the micro We do not promote drugs yeah, on this show, go. by the exactly. way. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Man. You just make amazing music. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Nah, I'm sober. listen. Yeah, I think that um, people always, well, they always want like, they always talk about like performing and stuff like that. So I think the best way to do it is uh, like uh. Like, I can't do comedy or anything like that on any type of substance, you know? Oh, I, need to, right. I need to be... It goes crazy. You gotta no, be in nature. I just feel a lot like, of people um, say nature. Oh, no, no. For mushrooms and that, like, definitely not, you know? Yeah, yeah. I would, you can take mushrooms in nature and stuff like that, and you can, like, dive and, like, relax, you know? But uh, it's 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 got its good and bad. It's a four-hour commitment, bro. So who's got four hours? So that's the scary to part to me. That's the reason why I never tried it. Tripping balls, That's you know? why I never tried acid or anything like that, because I was like, man... What happens if an hour in, I get a call that I need to do something for real? It's called a bad trip. Yeah, bro. I'm like, I can't Had plenty it. of them. In my life now, I can't afford that. I can't afford that. Exactly, dog. You know, and at the end of the day, um, you know, I'm a smoker, but I won't, like, 
just eat a bunch of edibles and be like, let's go about my day. No, nah, because edibles I can't is control level, it. Dog. I Obviously, I push buttons for a living. I'm a control freak, right? Yeah. I literally push uh, buttons for a living. I mean, for a living. So it's kind of like anything I can't control that I'm putting in my body, and it's like, oh, it's going to hit you whenever it freaking feels like it. I'm like, no, oh, thank you. I'm good. I'm just going to have my whiskey and hang out over here yeah that's the thing with edibles bro like uh i don't fuck with the edibles man like yeah the chocolates and stuff like you eat a little bit it doesn't work and you eat more and it doesn't work and then you eat it and then it's like ah, ah. with edibles for me it's like it's either too much or it's like i want to fucking i want to kill myself you know what i'm saying it's uh. like there's no fine line there's no like i can't i've never found the even key with edibles you know yeah you're thinking about the universe what yeah. you do and then you're like bro but why is when dixie's bags this color and Publix is, is like this and they give you paper bags at Publix and then all of a sudden an hour goes by and you're like why am I thinking about my grocery bags at Publix yeah like, for like deep no into sense. thought you know yeah and then it goes straight from there to I think I'm doing bad in my life that's the paranoia that's what I was gonna <laughs> say dog that's how mushrooms can be bro that's the thing that's why people who are scared to take mushrooms that's the thing they're gonna let you know everything good and everything bad mm -hmm. if something's good it's gonna be like this is amazing but if it's bad it's gonna be like oh this is bad you know? and if I if I ever did do it which um, I don't I don't really want to unless it would be like a little microdosing, but um, it kind of scares me because it's like if I go into it with that mind state, that's what's going to happen. Like if I'm like bad, 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 and then I take it, like I would have to be around good people in a good place and a good time and just be like, okay, maybe we'll do this, but most likely not. And I can say this freely because I'll never be running for president or anything yeah. like that. So I'm an artist. I'm an artist. So you don't got you know you don't you don't see yourself. I don't know, man. Like uh, I'm not a politician. No. Yeah, there you go. It's very hard for me to lie. Really, really hard. It's very difficult. Yeah, I can. I'm not an actor either. It's, it's difficult. I can't be a politician. I've done too much dirt in my life. That shit would come back quick. Yeah. <laughs> Chat GPT. What, Chat what has the badger done? Chat GPT knows, dog. What has he Chat done? Knows. Oh my god, I'm trying so hard. And I've then never... it comes back like his life in China or his life in America. <laughs> and we're like, both. We want to know all the dirt. Chat GPT. That's a stand the chat GPT and then there's like they have the evil sister or cousin or something like that. They have like they have another one already? They have two. They have a I Bing one. It. They have a Bing one and oh, a Google one. Oh god. And Chat GPT um, is like very like woke and politically correct. They have another one that's like anti Chat GPT, you know what I'm saying? So what like, is it what does it do that's different? I don't know, like, you could just, like, chat GPT, you can ask it, like, crazy questions, and it won't, like, say anything bad about any different type of people or anything like that. Like, you oh, can be, like... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sassy. What's up? The Bing is sassy. The Bing one, the Bing one, the yeah. The Bing, that's what it's called? See, I have yeah, no the idea. Bing. The Bing is the Microsoft search engine. Yeah, I, I remember that. Yeah, it still exists, so they have their own, like, chat GPT. So people actually go there instead of Google. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah, yeah, now people use Bing. Some people, I think Microsoft gives you Bing because I have a Microsoft computer. You know what it was when I was younger? I don't know if anybody remembers this. I was about to say my age. It was called Ask Jeeves. Yes. Ask Jeeves. That, that, you was, remember the first, that? that was the first Jeeves. You remember that? That shit never worked, bro. You had to like pay money. You know what I'm saying? You did? Yeah. I think I, I, don't got know. It, I used it for free. It was like red. And you asked it, like, just kind of how you ask Google now. Like, hey, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 100%. Whatever Ask question Jeeves. you want. But it never helped me with homework and shit. You know what I'm saying? I tried to get like some homework time. Yeah, it, did. Done it wasn't with it. like that. It wouldn't do that. That's what you know this what new one does. This new one, forget about it. You don't wow. got to do anything. Oh, so Microsoft was like, forget it. We're gonna make our own, huh? I don't know, bro. But they're not playing around, man. They it's are crazy. not playing. It's crazy. Like uh, there's gonna I'm be a battle to... of that, and then one of them is gonna win. Eventually. They're gonna take over. They're gonna one of them is gonna than make the monopoly, and then that's what everybody's gonna use, and that's it. I was just talking to one of my friends. He's in college, and he's like, yo. Man, I'm, I started using it, and what I do is I have it printed out for me. But I, you ask literally, ask the Chat GPT to like give me a C paper, you know what I'm saying, or give me a B paper written by a Latino kid from Miami that's going to this school. Like you put all that in there, and it like specifies it. Like it. if he wrote it, oh, she, she's like, I use it. <laughs> I'm a cheater too. <laughs> So then he goes back and he kind of like rewrites a little bit, maybe fucks up a punctuation mark here or there, and boom, gets a B. And and he did it on the way on on his computer and and then the Uber on the way to school. It's the thing, man. That thing is, but and it's for free. So what? Like, have you seen that? Um, have you seen that uh, documentary on Netflix about the social media? What's it called? Um, I don't know. But the first line of the documentary. I think it's, I forgot what it's called, but there's a We're Netflix, talking about the, how it's a drug. social world. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and then the first line of the movie is, if something is for free, 
Uh, you are the product. Yeah. And chat GPT is for free. Mm -hmm. So what I'm scared of is all I do is just logging up all of our data, just like Google's been doing forever. Oh, you yeah, know, just we know that. Just up all our data, and they're going to flip it on us. So That's the reason why I don't do that 23andMe, whatever That's it is. another one, too. They're using I'm it to look at... I'm not giving them my DNA. No, bro, Crazy don't, shit. don't do it, dog. I'm not doing it. There's already some other things that are coming out That's with that, bro. fucking nuts. I, I thought yeah. that shit. I'm not. I'm and like, did I'm, everybody read the contract of what they own of your DNA when you submitted? Like, I've never done it, so I've never read it. But I don't even want to know what the frick it says. I don't it could fuck. say, "Oh, ten years from now, we can use your DNA for blah 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 blah,", blah and some freaking language, lawyer language that we don't understand. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, there's like five of you in a room. <laughs> And you're like, Yo, what the fuck? Like, How did uh, this happen? Well, remember back in the day when you wanted to know your ancestry? And uh, and now I'm like, yeah, you know what? I feel like that's going to happen with every app we've ever bought. Like in oh, the future, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, well, you're like, no, I, didn't do that. I didn't do this. You're be like, Yo, you sign right? like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, The Badger. And this episode of the Honey Badger Hour podcast is brought to you by Patriot Vodka. Be sure to check out the Instagram in the link below at Patriot Vodka Official and grab your bottle of vodka today. Patriot Vodka is vodka made in America, handcrafted and bottled on site from red wheat, white corn, and blue corn. Patriot Vodka is currently available in select stores throughout Florida. Award winning. This is the bourbon of vodka. 100 proof, but smoother than 80. A clean vodka with a bit of character. Patriot Vodka is currently launching, and be sure to look for Patriot Vodka on shelves this summer. And follow our Instagram account below, at Patriot Vodka Official. Check our Instagram and buy a bottle today. Let's go! And the only reason that we're scared of that is because of the dirt anybody does, yeah. right? That's what the, the people don't want you to see. But everything else, they're posted online by themselves. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm eating. This is what I'm doing. Wow. This is my dog. This is that. We, they, we don't even need to tap into your phone. We check ourselves <laughs> we're, for yeah, them. Yeah, we're doing it for them. You know what I'm saying? But now, the bad stuff somebody does, then they're like, oh, but they're sneaking in on my phone on my privacy. This and this and that. It's crazy out here. It really is. I don't know what's going to happen, but Lord help us. I think That's everything's going to be open. I think everything eventually is going to oh, be open. Just There's not going to be no secrets. Information. There's no not going to be no secrets. There's not going to be anything. And it's going to be like a scary time, you know? Can, like, yeah. And then, like, you okay. know what I mean? So then, like, and then that's why everybody's always going to be PC. I think it's going to be, you ever seen the um, Black Mirrors? Yeah. Have you I seen love the Black, Black Mirrors Mirror. episode where the girl, where they're, where they're too polite, and then the one lady who's the truck driver? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, that, like, they keep, they keep, they, that's, oh, that's already happening in China. Really? They have a credit score in China, bro. People with low credit scores that like they get caught littering or if they make a crime, they can't it leave the country. Down. Yeah, oh, bro, they can't leave the country. They can't go to certain restaurants. They can't wow. drive on some streets. They're already doing that in China, like uh -huh. with the with the with the way you with the way you act like with a with a social credit score. In China, they already have that one thousand percent. R C. And then they're making it here now. Now they want to make digital crazy. currency. They want a digital currency, world currency. Of it's getting crazy. So I just saw, which is very similar to that. Uh, I don't know if it's true, but because obviously I saw it on social media and it was real. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, it's a thing, guys. I, I saw it, and this guy was talking about that your car insurance asks you, you know, we're gonna lower your rate or we're gonna send you money back if we can track how good of a driver you are, right? We all know this already, right? It's already a thing. That's right. And they track it. what you drive, how you drive, where you're driving, what your speed limit is, da 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 da. So now they're saying already in this certain country, I forgot where he said, um, in certain place, that they're already implemented this, meaning that they allowed you to track your car, you allowed them to track your car, and you're going uh, past the speed limit. So it was 60 and you went to 70. Automatically right there, you get charged to your credit card. You get charged to your debit card, and it just pops up on your phone. Hey, you were speeding, you just got your ticket, da da da. No cop involved, no nothing. It's China already. Boom, you, you, you passed the stop sign. Boom. Oh, you just got charged for stopping the stop sign. And nobody's watching because you allowed them to track the your AI. car. Yeah. It's freaking crazy. In China. How it crazy is, is that? Bro, you get a ticket with no cop. Just you just there and boom. In China. Oh, you got a ticket. In China, if they jaywalk, they get a ticket on their WeChat app. Because the WeChat app is like their money, their phone, their everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it follows them, their footsteps. And it tracks their, it tracks like their, a Fitbit. Yeah, it tracks everything, bro. Like, because uh, they have all cameras. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a police state there. Like, um... They have they have AI over there in China that like um 
when you get in the elevator, it can read your eyes that you're getting in the elevator, and then a car will pull up and take you to go because it already knows your routes. You ever get in your car? Wow. You ever get in your car and your GPS tells you where you're going that day? Yeah. Or yeah, exp- I get it every thinks, Thursday. Yeah, every thinks. Thursday, the GPS tells me where my with the comedy show that I'm, every time I get into the car, and my no. car at eight o'clock at night, it tells me what comedy show I'm going to that night. That I believe. It's fucking crazy, dog. That's just the same way that like right now we'll talk about. Hey man, I bought something at Target and blah blah blah, and then I open up Instagram and there's a Target hat. Yeah, I'm gonna be talking like about pizza, that, dog. Like, yo, you know what? I want pizza tomorrow, bro. Yeah, and then you're Donald's. gonna get five commercials for pizzas, bro. I, I know. Yeah, but remember, at the at the end of the day, we need our phones. We need. That's why it's hard to say no. And then also, like, you're gonna tell Instagram, oh, don't allow to record, don't allow to to uh to to give access to my photos. Then it's how hard, are you gonna yeah. use the app? You get what I'm saying? Like, they don't anything. give you a choice. I'll and you have to sign off. You got to press okay. Accept the okay, terms. accept the terms. I get it. I know. And then later on, we're still bitching about it. We're like, ah, but I don't want them to listen. You're like, well. I think it's going to be to the point with the electric cars, bro. Like, you get in trouble, your car doesn't start. You know, they get to shut down your car. You get a bad credit score. You do something it's out like of line. somebody who had a DUI. They had a the little thing in there. Like, oh, no. There's not going to no, be no listen. Can't go nowhere. It's going to be good, though, because. Uber. It's weird though because nobody's gonna die on car accidents now. Pretty soon. That would be AI amazing. Be, so that's. A, I think that's awesome. I know, right? So it's hard. It's like, oh, I want the government to drive me, but what if you say there will never be a drunken car accident ever right. again? Right. Which is what, which is one of the good things of having AI and auto. It's like these robots are cool, but you gotta make sure they're cool robots, dog. Right, you know what right. I mean? Like they gotta let us break the law a little bit. Like, listen, bro. <laughs> it goes kind of. You gotta let me buy, you know. <laughs> it's a two-headed sword. So, yeah. uh, uh, you know, and it, at the end, at the end of the day, that what, what's the saying from back in the day? Like, would you rather? You know, the you got two devils. You got one that lies to you and one that tells you the truth. They're both devils, but which one would you rather have? Yeah. You'd rather the one that's going to tell you the truth yeah. instead of the lying devil. But either way, you're still stuck with the devil. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So The devil you know, you know or the devil. It's, it's, yeah. it's difficult. It's difficult because you're right. If somebody came out with that, you know, people who have lost people in car crashes would, would automatically be voting for that automatically right they don't care about that they, they just be like that's awesome but then you're right now they're tracking everything and uh, it's weird it's like uh it's like that fine of like it's that fine line of like living in a utopian perfect society or having that human error which kind of makes life cool the human error the fact that you can go in a car and you might die that's kind of what makes life special too yeah it makes life special like, because you, you don't know forever? you don't know yeah well we're not vampires, so. I wouldn't want to, right? Would you yeah. want to, I, I could do another 50 years, though, maybe. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 50 years is good, and then I'm good. It would be yeah. nice if we went to, like, 120, and then we start getting old, you know? The question is, when we live forever, would it be, like, I reach 21, and then I'm 21 forever? Or do I reach 100, and then I just, like, keep going, and I can't walk nowhere type shit? Like, how would it be if we lived forever? You get what I'm saying? Or would our brain just be put into some freaking robot, and then we're in the robot, and that's why we live forever? Because we don't have no physical, but we have a brain. Like, it's too much. I know, I don't even dog. know what to say to that. I think, I think you are right, though. That's, you know... That's like going on a roller coaster and you're excited to go on the roller coaster, but you know everything that's going to happen on the roller coaster. It's like, okay, why am I on this roller coaster? What's oh, the ride? Where's the ride? Yeah, yeah. that's true, dog. I agree. That's I what agree it what is. That's saying. a great analogy, yo. Yeah. You don't want to ride a... <laughs> you don't want to ride a ride that you already know. Mm-hmm. It's, you want the suspense, What's the excitement? dog. There's yeah. no excitement. You're not living life anymore. Now you're just kind of like, I don't even know what that's called. Autopilot? I think I need to get off. I think I'm going to get off social, bro, because... I think if you get off social, th- I mean, we're doing you know, a podcast right now. No, but that's what I'm saying, dog. I'm gonna get off social, and I'm just people want to hear me. They gotta tune into the podcast, dog, because you feel oh, I like, like you, that. you live Only life more when you're not connected, dog. When you're not worried about somebody was saying this the other day, like yo, you go to a, a club or something. How many people are just on their phones taking videos of what's happening, I and they're know. not even enjoying not what's enjoying happening? It. I know. And if I, yo, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we're living our life I'm to guilty. show people how we're living our life. I know. I'm the fr- I love that shit. I'm mean, me too. I'm talking about myself actually. I'm not talking about anybody. I'm just really that's me. You know? Yo, yeah. yo, yeah. I'm here. Look, I didn't even. I, I heard the Backstreet Boys concert. <laughs> I didn't even hear, hear a song. They are Backstreet Boys. Watching the Backstreet Boys through my phone, dog. Yeah, Watching them through my screen exactly. lens when not they're right in, in front of you, dog. Not even enjoying it. I know. I know. So I catch myself doing that sometimes. So what I'll do is I'll get a clip long enough to let people know what i'm doing or whatever and then i will put my phone away to enjoy it because i did pay for this you know what i'm saying i did pay for this i'm not i'm not trying to watch this whole thing on my phone now yes there are people that are like i'm gonna record the whole thing i'm like Shh, 
how do you do that? I got like less of, I got like half a gig left in my phone. Like, how are you guys recording this whole thing? And my phone's old, so maybe that's the reason. I got to upgrade so I could record all the Backstreet Boys concerts that I go to. <laughs> It's gonna be gotta, awesome. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, you gotta get the big memory, dog. You gotta get the sixty-four. Or whatever. I, guess I don't know so. what the big one is. You know. You gotta get the five hundred. Oh, there you go. It's a five hundred. Yeah. I don't even know what big memory gigs. is. This ain't no. I don't that's even what know it is now. That's the top. That's the top you can no, get. I think one terabyte is. Well. One terabyte. Oh, on a phone. Yeah. On a phone. Oh my god, my hard drive is a terabyte, and I got like I'm yeah. only halfway through of like seventy-three episodes. That's a lot of holy snap. And that's Damn, a video I, on a phone. Dog. That's a video. Imagine music. Music is is way less size than than uh, movies and videos that you're taking. Oh yeah, music is long, a lot. You can, can put a lot of music. I can put on one terabyte. You know how many songs I can put on one terabyte? Psh, it would take me forever. Forever. It would forever. take me forever. Not not forever, but I could, I could get there. I could get there. But I'm saying like it's a lot more than if I was doing video or whatever. Yeah. So imagine on your phone. Yo, speaking of forever, you're saying we're talking about uh, when we're going to die? You're going to live forever through your music. Hey, 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 hey. I appreciate we're gonna that. We're going to live through this podcast, dog. Yeah, we are. We're putting out good content into the world, baby. We're I love fucking it. I love putting it. Putting that good energy. I love it. So we're going to resonate through and throughout, baby. I'm excited. The new ever, dog. The new generation. The kids. Oh, so you got a son, right? Yeah. How is he on the phone, bro? It's got to be crazy. He grew oh, up with, a, with loves social media, phone. everything, right? He doesn't go anywhere without his phone. He could probably, he's probably way smarter than us on that thing. Though. He could probably he's do everything He's way smarter that, than me with freaking everything, except for maybe life. <laughs> <laughs> but book smarter, way smarter. They changed up the math now. They do math different than when I was younger. And, and he comes home, and thank God he's super smart, so I don't have to worry about it. But he, um, he comes home, and he's like, Daddy, you know... There's like 17 different ways to do math now. I'm exaggerating. 17 different ways to do math. Back in the day, I always did math in one way. That's how they taught it. So now I understand why they do this is because different people think in different ways. And one way not might not work for one child, so let's try another way. But each child has to gets tested on every single way to do it. Right? So I'm like, okay, this is a little confusing. So then I'm confused. A year later, he gets into middle school or whatever. And he comes to me and he starts algebra already because he's a very smart kid. And he goes, Daddy, I didn't know that there's letters in math now. They put the they added the letters with the numbers. And I'm like, welcome to life, son. <laughs> this is how it is. One, yeah. they, they tell you it's math with numbers. And all of a sudden they throw some freaking letters in that motherfucker. And you don't know what's going on. <sighs> True story. That's how I felt when I got to algebra and I was like, hold on a second. There's letters? I never made it past algebra. In, okay, well then. So, so, so they use letters in, in math. If no, you I know, if I know, I know. I saw it. I saw it. I just know it's like, ah. No. <laughs> yeah, That's right, this is getting confusing. I signed up to Miami Dade College. I aced all the English classes and speech classes. Yeah. And then with math, I never got past remedial math. Right? As soon as the letters kicked in, I was like, smashing I those fractions. After the fifth time in a row, I was amazing at fractions. But. That's too funny. <laughs> <laughs> fractions I can so, do. So uh, I need the AI just as much as the next guy. Yeah, need it for my for mathematical equations and there stuff, you, you know? But yeah, man. So then working with artists and stuff like that, is it hard working with artists? Like, um, you probably, do you understand, like, everybody's different? So you have to, like, kind of be, like, a little oh, bit yeah. of a therapist or, like, kind of like a father for the, Ooh, I like, would say everybody needs different therapist parenting. Therapist more than a father, for therapist. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, can't, you can't just go in the studio and be like, I'm your daddy. You know, you can't, <laughs> that can't might not that. work. Yeah, it might not work. But um, as far as therapists, yeah, I, I've, 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 I've gone through a lot of that. Uh, I think I'm pretty good at it. A lot of people tell me that I have patience when it comes to that. And that's only when I'm in the studio and it's for music. Because outside of the studio, I do not have patience. Right? Um, or I'm getting better at it. How about like that? Well, now that I'm older, I'm getting better at it. But when it comes to dealing with an artist in the studio, and it comes to uh, making art and making work, obviously I'm also getting paid at the time. So, you know, I'm kind of like, okay, thank you. I I'm like, okay. You have problems today. Let's talk about the problems. We want to get it out or whatever the case may be. Now let's make the art about that. So that could help sometimes. Sometimes it's kind of like, oh, people think that they're wasting their time. But they're not wasting their time because at the end of the day, we might just make a song about that that's a hit and it's a smash mm -hmm. because you had to get it out. So you had to let it out and say, okay, now we can write the lyrics. Now that I know where your headspace is at, now I can know what to do for your art. Because I'm like, okay, she's sad today. So we're going to write a sad song. We'll do some sad song. Because you don't want to push the artist and be like, 
hey, I'm the producer. We're going to make a super happy song today when they're in a sad mood. You get what I'm saying? Like, I adapt to the artist. That's what a producer does. And those are my favorite producers that I grew up on, Quincy Jones and Rick Rubin and people like that. Like, they were there for the artist and to make the artist better. They weren't there as a producer to tell the artist what to do. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like those kind of be. people, I'm just kind of like, uh, that's not me. You know, I, I don't really, I don't do that. I'm more of the, I work with you because I love what you do, so I'm not going to take that away from you. You get what I'm saying? And try to make you me and how I would do it. No, I want you to do it the way you do it because you're the artist and I'm just trying to hone you and make it better, as, as, as much better as I can, right? So, you know, at the end of the day, yes, a little bit of the therapy is in there. Um, but it always it, it, they always feel better, I think, after they leave uh, my studio because they're like, at least I got the therapy out. He was nice enough to talk to. He was he gave some good, decent advice. Hopefully, I give decent advice. Who knows? If you catch me on the wrong day, maybe not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right? Who's my therapist? That's what I'm trying to figure <laughs> out. Well, sometimes people just need somebody to listen to, you know? Right? So... I That's just need a called. therapist to give me pills. There you go. I'm just joking. You just that need the plug. Um, I've been joking. Um, for therapy, bro, have you ever trained? Uh, have you ever done any jiu-jitsu or anything? Or any Never. type of martial arts? Never. That's I've one just been good. a musician in my whole life. That's a different type. Of, that's a bit, that's a, uh, going into that flow state what we were talking about before. It's going the same thing when you fight. You get the same thing when you fight, I right? I already know. So when you're in the studio, sometimes maybe you're in the studio and it feels like five minutes and it's like six hours right. go by. That's and you get out and you're like, oh shit, it's a light, it's light out. And you were just making some crazy magic in so there. So that's called the flow state, which yeah. means that you're in touch with the higher power. We're not going into religion, right? I'm not going to say God. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to say higher power for different people. And you're flowing and you're the vessel and it's flowing through you and it's flowing through you nonstop and you're doing these amazing things that you kind of black out. I call it like the blackout period, right? When you're in the flow state. And just like you said, six hours later, you're like, what the fuck just happened? Right? And then you listen back to what you do or you watch your tapes of you fighting and you're like, what? I was already, I was on some shit that I wasn't even thinking. Yes. I was just on it. I was just on it. That's definitely, that's the flow state. At least that's what we call it. That's so. a therapy within itself. Oh, huge. Right? Huge therapy. And uh, I, t I tell this to some of my friends all the time. I'm like, find something that you love just to, just to, I mean, you don't have to be great at it. You know what I'm saying? Just like, love you it. don't have to do great at it. Now, if you're going to go try to do it for money, then yes, be really good at it. But if you're not, and it's just something as a therapy, so I'm really lucky as, uh, as a producer, artist, somebody who makes music and so on and so forth, I have an outlet to put my rage, my sadness, when something happens to me in my life, when someone passes away, or something happens, or, or, or even something good happens, whatever, I have an outlet to come and put it out in. And that helps me. And that helps me. Some people don't have that at all. And that is hard. And those are the people that explode one day. They're just like, ah, I can't take this. So I'm very, very lucky. And like and anybody who does art and does a anything like that is extremely lucky to even, you know, I know you might not be Taylor Swift or Drake or whatever, but you have somewhere to put this this thing we call life, that we will, the stuff we deal with, into something that is your therapy that you enjoy. And the next day you feel better, you know? So... I think that we're, we're, we're blessed with that. Super blessed. Uh, like I always say, it's when you're able to just turn your brain off, you know, and when you're able to, when you're so good at producing that, you know, it's not that you're turning your brain off when you're, I'm sure when you're making beats and producing, but it's like you're, you can get into it, this is just what you do. So you're not thinking, uh, being able to think about being, yeah, like you're saying, uh, being able to hone in on something 1000% where like, you're not worried about anything else because you can't be worried about anything else to do that thing properly. Mm -hmm. Right, so mm -hmm. that's we're super lucky, bro. I got lucky that I found that with fighting and now comedy, you know, yeah, even podcasting. When I finish these things, I feel like freaking I'm on euphoria, Good. euphoria, you know, I can't yeah. sleep because I'm like all jacked up, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I get the energy from what the What are guests. we gonna do now? Yeah, you know, like you want to take yeah. over the world, dog. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna make some beats after this. <laughs> I'm, gonna, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna buy a beat maker and just start fucking. I'm gonna start sending you, I'm gonna start sending you emails with stuff, you know, that's hilarious. Like, yo, check, check out my beat that I made at two in the morning. After you left, man. I, I was listening and to. I'm gonna email him back. Like, check out this podcast I made. <laughs> it's fucking dope. No, and then we're gonna and you're gonna play back the part where you're like, remember what when you tell people, yo, some people need to be told, hey, man, <laughs> stick to podcasting, dog. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. Hey, who knows your beats might be good. You know what I'm saying? I got that. I got the um, life experience, yo. Some some soul into it. Hey, you, feel you me? know what? The soul is is what. From Asia. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. That's another question, oh, his soul right? Soul comes from Asia. 
when you meet, you work with artists, right? So artists, uh, music is a young person's game, right? It's harder to blow when you're a little bit older. Like, is there a like, yeah. famous people? Like, uh, Hollywood doesn't really want to look at, like, a graying person, maybe. But how do you make good music as a young artist when they lack so much experience in life? Okay. Does that make sense? So, I'll say this, which is, it depends on what role you're playing in the music industry. So, if you want to be the artist, yes. I mean, obviously... They want a young-looking person. That's like somebody's not getting drafted to the NBA at 40 years old. Hey, boom, boom. Like, we know that. Boom. But you can be Pat Riley. You get what I'm saying? You can be an old man who's, who's um, you know, and Pat, you're not old to me. I love you, Pat Riley. You are not old. You are still a very young, 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 um, amazing man. So, anyways, and, you know, I'm all about franchises. Like, he, he is my shit. Franchise. I'm not about players. I'm all about franchises. Always have been. Anyways. Players come and go. Franchise will stay forever. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I so, need to make a franchise. There you go. Make the franchise. Because I'm going to die, dog. <laughs> I need to keep this shit going. Wow. <laughs> no, you said it. You got 50 years. You're good to go. I got 50 years and I got 72 episodes. Just go back. You got 73 hours of listening to my ass if I go. <laughs> <laughs> or imitate me AI-wise. There you go. Or you could just fucking put me into your chat GPT and talk to me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, snap. How sick. Imagine, bro. You're somebody... Oh, fuck. And damn, my best friend just died. I anymore. wish I had a podcast with him. Fuck. Yeah, dog. Oh, my, oh my God. God. I thought you were being serious right now. Oh, no, 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 it was. But. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that. No, 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 it was a while ago, but you I'm know sorry. what I'm saying? Damn, that would have been dope. If I could have used him, if I could have talked to him in JetGPT, now nah, it's all right. I mean, motherfucker's gone. Dog. What are you going to do, you know? But if I could have talked to him in JetGPT, I'd tell you what, my friends are lucky. When I die, they're going to be chilling, bro. Yeah. We're good. They're gonna man. recreate you. Yeah. There, there was a Black Mirror special about that. I think Miley Cyrus was yeah, on it. Was. Black that Mirror. Was the so one they took. Her? Yeah. So, so what they did was they took. They had her repeat every word that's in the dictionary. They had her say it right, and then they had the music producers go on and make all the melodies on her songs and make all the beats and take her words and put them in the melodies, mm-hmm. write it out how they wanted. So she never had to record another song again. Ever. And they just kept coming out with songs of her. Bom 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 bom. Endless songs, and then she never had to record again. How crazy is that? They said that they just tapped into her brain and they tapped, her brain was making t- the music. Yeah, yeah. You seen the one where the girl well, died? The, you seen the one where the girl died and they put her in the doll? And then the guy uh, was like... I saw so many of them. That yeah, yeah, it goes... It's, it's, it's crazy. It, it well, we need to crazy. go back and watch because it's all happening now, bro. I know, I know, I know. <gasps> you so, know the episode with the phones where they just... Everybody's taking out the phones and the girl's like running and everybody's just following her with the phones? That shit happened oh, to me, dog. Oh, oh. Like if she was famous. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Something about. happened, yeah. Yeah. That's what ha- yo, that's what happens nowadays, bro. They'd rather record you than to help you. Bro, that shit happened to me, dog. You see this no way. this scar I have in my head, bro? Dog, I got, got I got jumped. They... I got I tried to stop a fight. Dude, I never even said this story out loud. I don't even know if I could say this. I tried to stop a fight, bro. I tried to stop a fight on the street, a street fight, right? Okay. And then um these fucking guys jumped somebody and they jumped them real bad and they were beating the shit out of them oh, in front of me, right? And, tried to, and then to, I jumped in and tried to stop out. them and then they all jumped me and then yeah. I got bottled. The you guy, wanted to be the hero. Yeah. Well, oh, fucking hell. Yeah, I guess so. Just don't be the hero, <laughs> dog. Yeah, I know. Trust less, me. Less, less life. Just, this fucking, they, they, they stabbed, they, they broke a water, they broke a bottle and then they all jumped me, like all 10 of them jumped on me and they stabbed me in the head with a bottle. You know what I'm saying? Oh. When that shit happened though, when I was checking my head, when I realized like I was, bro, it was crazy. I tried to stop the fight and break it up and then like somebody, they grabbed me and then I couldn't move my arms and everybody was punching me like from like, it was crazy, bro. It was like 10 punches at me at the same time. This is here I, in Miami? Nah, this is in Asia, yo. Oh, okay. And then, uh, bro, I'm trying to fucking not get knocked out because I had a friend in high school who got knocked out and he got put to sleep. And then he became like a vegetable when he woke up, you know? Oh, so I was like, don't yeah. get stomped out. And I'm trying yeah. to catch all the punches like in my head like this. And then one of the punches felt different. They freaking broke a bottle and hit me. That's how I got this scar. Yo, people don't even know. The... And you, then you did pass out? No. Or they probably think it's from regular broke, fighting. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. So then they broke this crazy ass. Then I knew something was different. And then as soon as I started gushing blood everywhere, everybody just let go. And then like, when I was looking around for help, bro, it was just a bunch of people with their phones out. Nobody oh. fucking stopped. The, okay, the people you know that were, were with their phones out, were those the people that were jumping you, or those are the people who are watching the Just people the, jump the people you? people watching the people, dog. Oh my and I God. jumped in because somebody else was getting jumped. I that know, wasn't going to be the. I know. You know what I'm saying? You didn't get your phone out and start recording that guy. You were actually trying to do something morally good because you're a morally good person. I don't know. I mean, right. I'm not trying to chug myself or nothing, but yeah, dog, it's crazy. It's just crazy. That scene in the movie happens to me. And then you know what's funny? I went back on some. That just sound like a movie. Dog, you just put me in a movie right now, yo. I swear to God. I told that, st- yeah, dog. And that's Jackie a, Chain is gonna play that's you. That's the first time I, I I said that story. People don't even know. I got this. this I got uh, thirty eight stitches in my head, yo. Oh, just from that. From an attempted murder, and dog. And he's standing in the back, 
They stabbed me in the back and they stabbed me in the head. And the one in the back, I didn't even feel it till the next day because I got the stitches. So, and yeah, when I woke up in the already... morning, I was like, why does my back hurt? And then I had to check my shirt and I had a hole in my shirt, dog. Oh, my God. From this fucking cut. Dude, like, so well, you're went, blessed boom. from God to be here then. Yeah, they could have got man. my... Oh, my God. I never thought about that, yeah, bro. Yeah, of course, bro. <sighs> That's yeah, I could have been dead, dog. Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm you're here being... for a reason. You're here for a reason. That's a fact. You're here for a reason. So let me ask you this. If you're over there in Asia, how does that work? Like, you had friends that called the ambulance for you? Or just all of a sudden you just woke up the next day? Like, how does that work? Bro, it's kind of crazy to say that, right? Because I know this in night... Europe it's 999 to call, not 911. There's no police. I don't know the police, dog. You I was alone. The... I was alone, right? And I was in the outside of the gym that I train at. I was alone. None of my friends were there. And then somebody that I know was like, I'm hello. And they grabbed, they saw me when I was like looking for help. You know what's funny? I went to the bathroom. As soon as it happened, I wasn't even trying to like fight anymore or nothing. I was like, yo, I was thinking about my career, you know? I was still like, this is this was yeah, in yeah. 2020 you know what? This of, you. of January. You know what's funny? This po- this is like three weeks before we started the podcast. So the first three episodes of the podcast, I'm normal. And then there's like two weeks where I have my uh, band-aid on. That was like literally when it happened, yo, in between the podcast. Oy. But yo, Battle um, scores. my boy fucking saw me, grabbed me, and threw me on the back of his motorbike and then took me to the hospital, you know? Oh, and then he took me to the hospital. God. Do you remember being on the back of the border? Yeah, 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 I remember everything. I, was remember, I, remember, I remember I was in the back of the hospital, and then I got a cigarette from my friend. I was like, oh, give me a fucking cigarette. I was just smoking a cigarette <laughs> in the back. I'm like, this sucks. Like, my life is fucking, what the uh, hell? Uh, and I remember, I'm holding my head, and then I'm like, and then this little, there's like a little lady who pulls up behind me with her son on the back, and the little kid looks at me, and I'm just like, and it's like, this, hey, what's up, man? I got like a freaking, he's looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, oh, don't be like me when you grow up. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, oh it was a God. whole ordeal, you know. But thank God, I mean, but you were conscious. Shit, shit could have hit my eye. You were dog. conscious. I never thought about like that. You, you know? said you were conscious. But yeah, man, that's crazy. People pulling out the phones, bro. You get in a car accident nowadays. Some look at all look at all these um videos on um on social media, right? Of the bad things happening. People just want to see bad shit. Oh, know? I know. They it's love crazy, it. They want to watch it. I heard. I mean, I don't know if this is true. Once again, now we're going back to the China stuff, which I don't really know much of about it or whatever but they said that the tiktok they're pushing the funny uh detrimental knowledge towards the american tiktoks for our kids and on their tiktoks over there is like knowledge that will help people out and the tiktoks here they're showing so they're these dumb it. challenges bro they got suicide That's what it is, challenges right? there's some dark shit out there there's suicide a sui- challenge they got suicide they're making weird shit cool bro in the u.s tiktok and then over there the tiktok they only have like a two hour limit and they're promoting like scientists so the way they're promoting uh, oh, like it shuts off if you can't use it in 24 hours you they, can only use it for two yeah, hours yeah they have a they have a limit and then in china Shut they're up. pushing kids to like learn engineering science arts oh i know and then here they're pushing twerking like all this like yeah, yeah, deviant yeah. shit for the kids twerking. you know uh, which is whatever, yeah. Dog, like twerking influencers. Which like, gender are you? Oh and my god. Bah, 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 bah. But over there, I saw a video the other day, and they were showing them how to uh, how to just load semi uh, automatic weapons, N- uh, real quick. And the kids are in elementary, second grade, bro. And our kids are getting taught. Are you a boy or are you a girl? De- and they're loading up weapons over there. And I'm like, uh, what's happening? I saw it. I saw it, bro. Because You know when what I you was... saw the video I'm talking about? Yeah, no, but I know I saw the rise of China, bro, because when I was fighting over there, when I first started there. when I first started fighting over there, it wasn't too developed. I started going there in 2013, all the way up to like 2000, 2017, to one of my last time in China, I think 2019. Yo, but I saw they always make like these Chinese words. Of, they they make China versus the world. So they try to like they sh- try to show like to their people like Chinese empowerment. You know, so they get all these foreign fighters that are supposed to lose. Like you go there, like and all the odds are stacked against you. You know, really? they'll cha- yeah, they'll change your opponent on you. They'll give you like flights at fucked they, up times. They'll you'll they be sleeping dirty for their country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be sleeping like you know when you go to China. Like it's a, like you know when you go there that the money's good and they always pay, but it's gonna be like oh, the stacks are against you. Like yo, they'll wake you up like on fight day where you're supposed to be sleeping in and relaxing. They'll come get you like at nine in the morning and take you to immigration to go get like and make you sit in immigration for like nine hours yeah yeah, yeah. tire your like, ass out yeah like tire like wake you up at nine in the morning all the foreign fighters are like what the hell's going on here like they'll have like the police come and take you to immigration to get like work permits or something they'll just pull some stunts on you you know jesus but what they're doing they're trying to do is like show like china empowerment they always do china versus the world and they have all these chinese guys beating up all these foreign fighters to like get, to get the people hyped and i believe it Yo, the things that's going on now, it's crazy. And I would say this. In America, everybody is like Dominican, Cuban, Puerto Rican, all these different countries, black, yeah, white. Yeah. We're you know, a bunch of cultures. We're a bunch of cultures, uh-huh. right? In China, everybody's Chinese, dog. 
<laughs> they ain't even. Ha- that's I'm not half sure the if that was the truth or a joke. I no. mean, but it was funny. <laughs> you know what I'm saying though? Like they're not arguing about shit like that. They don't have this weird, this weird wars and shit that we're having here. You know, yeah, like of course they're they're at least got that figured out. That was too funny. You know what I'm saying, dog? <laughs> Over there, they're just Chinese. That's they're it. not even like yeah. arguing about that. They well, don't of have course, no, I mean that's why we're America. We we you know we we have that policy. We're that's free. what makes us the best. Yeah, freedom. Yeah, of course. This is my only. You can come from somewhere else and be nothing and become something. This is what I always tell people, bro. And we get a lot of hate, and even traveling overseas, bro. Like I remember when Trump got into like back in the day when I used to say I was in my I was from America. People just be like, oh, I would say I'm from Miami. They just be like, oh, Miami Heat. They'll tell me LeBron James. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Miami when, is not America. Exactly. Miami is the Bermuda Triangle. Yo, this is the we best city. We don't exist. Doc. We don't exist in the world. Do we exist? But we don't exist. Like Miami's so weird. We go to other places. And they like think that they're hard, and we're like, yeah. But do you got people eating other people's brains on the bridge? Nah, huh? yo, it's are a- you that hard? <laughs> huh? You guys that hard over they here? They don't have Florida man. They don't got gators yeah, eating your Flo- babies. We're Florida man. Like uh, God, yeah, yeah, rest in man. peace. It's, it's it's so horrible. But we have like preschools getting shot up and stuff in Florida and in Miami. Like we're bad here. Like it's 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 bad. Have you ever done the the little uh, stupid challenge where you put your birthday and then you put. Florida man next to it and uh, see what the dumbest thing that a Florida man did on your birthday is. No. So on my birthday is December 17th. I'm a Sagittarius, right? And it, I basically put Florida man, December 17th. And it goes, Florida man gets arrested for trying to pay McDonald's with marijuana. That's the top story. <laughs> I swear to God. No, it gets worse. So like that's like a funny one. But you could put it in your birthday and it might be something like bad, bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're 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 not very, we're, you know. I love people, but we're not very bright down here. There's a curfew we're, at Miami Beach now for spring break. It's two, right? Yeah. And and we used to be till five. Yeah. Yo, what yeah. Ha- what happened? Yeah, man. Um. I believe it. That's you know that gets passed because of the residents, the residents that live people there. Got shot. Well, yeah, of course. Well, not only that, not only that, yeah. Well, we're in Florida. That's, that's what happens a lot. Texas happens. I love Texas too. I love Florida and Texas, but at the same time, yeah, there's some messed up shit happening here. But um, I, I didn't know that Miami is the only place. I didn't know that other places in the world you can't buy liquor till twenty four seven. Yeah, Miami's bro. like one of the few places. And no. even like even once you leave Miami, you can't do that, dude. In, in our, Thailand, you can't do that. In no, Asia, you can't. Not, it uh, shuts like at one in the morning. Exactly. No, not even in Orlando, which is still in Florida, four hours away from us. You can't buy alcohol after two a.m. You cannot buy alcohol. You cannot even go say, hey, I want to go have a house party, right? After I came from the club and you and your friends are gone and everybody wants to continue like we do in Miami, right? And you go, you go to the gas station, try to buy beer to go to the gas station. They will not sell it to you after 2 a.m., right? And then you have other places like when I went to Austin, Texas, uh, what was it? Maybe like a couple weeks ago or whatever. And the craziest shit, it's Sunday, right? And I'm like, okay, I'm on vacation. I don't have to go to church. Uh, it's Sunday, so I'm gonna go get some whiskey. Closed. The whole day they don't sell liquor on Sunday. It doesn't matter the time. They do not sell beer or liquor on Sunday in Texas. And there's a lot of places like this. It's more than just Texas. Yo. So you have to buy your liquor for the weekend on Friday and Saturday to make sure you have your shit for Sunday, right? What about the Super Bowl? That's when the Super fucking- Bowl comes around. And they're a football. They love football. So they're stocking up on Saturday. Yeah. They're selling all that it's because Monday. Super Bowl Sunday, you cannot buy beer. You cannot buy alcohol. It's wild. That's over the most there. un-American shit I've ever heard in my life, yo. <laughs> Joe Rogan is lying to everybody. <laughs> this guy is tricking everybody, thinking they need to go over there and be the hub. And they don't even well, sell alcohol over. on Sundays. I mean, I guess they're trying to keep people safe or whatever the I case may be. You. But at the end of the day, I do love it over there. I freaking, it's one of my favorite places. I was going to ask you about that. So you were, saw, I said you were, uh, it's like the music hub over there, right? Like they for, have the music. For live performances it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, for live music. Yeah. They have a lot of live music in Asia. I don't see too much in Miami. I was listening to you on Win Night Miami and you were talking about uh, you love, you really love Austin. So you go out there and you were just really there recently because the podcast I was listening to you was a while ago. So. Yeah. Go uh, you, go, you go over there for work and producing or to both, find artists? Both. I just go over there to relax sometimes and find inspiration as well because, man, over there they got the best food everywhere. Um, every bar you go into has, you know, amazing musicians just playing, like a random bar. You're not, like, paying tickets to get in, so on and so forth. Um, and then it's, it's very close to San Antonio, which I like, too. Uh, I went specifically just to see Elton John. I was just, like, on some vacation mode. Damn. I saw his last concert. 
So, but he, he never, he's never going on tour again. There's no more concerts. It's done. You can't see Elton John anymore. And I saw Elton John. It's my first concert I saw when I was like nine. <sighs> right? So my mom took me to the concert Elton John. And it was, I was like, I got to see his last one. I got to go. And I bought the tickets so so early in advance that they were like maybe 70 bucks, 100 bucks for decent seats. And by the time I got there, like on that day in San Antonio, like right there, I could have sold them for like a thousand each or Damn. whatever. It was crazy. But let me tell you what, he rocked the shit out of that place. Wow, how and long like ago his, was that? Like, uh, this is probably last a, album? Month, a month or two oh. ago, or not even. How was it? How he was playing the piano and stuff? Was he was yeah, he rocking? He was, playing he was, rocking the piano. was he singing and he was doing rock his thing? and rolling. And you know, it was two and a half hours. He played every single song that you've ever known of him. Every single it's one. He played two and a half hours. It's a little bit funny. Yeah, I've been this thinking feeling that, inside. I saw you. Uh, yeah. no, I've been thinking so, ever since you said Elton. I've been thinking that song. Like, oh fuck. So he what, sang that song. I thought it was. What cool. did he close with? He closed Remember? with. I think it was your song. Yeah, he closed with your song, which is actually a song wrote by Bernie, which is his songwriter. So his songwriter writes all the songs. He does all the melodies, uh, med, um, melodies and sings them, right? But the other guy writes the words. Bernie is like one of his best friends throughout his life. Oh. Anyways, point is that Bernie wrote your song for him. So when he's saying, this is your song, uh, he's talking about Bernie is writing that song for him. Like, this is your song. Now go sing it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And now everybody kind of looks at it in a love way, even though it was kind of like a best friend way of how they how they were, he was writing it to him. So it was very cool. But the one thing that I do remember from the concert the most is that when he played the piano, like my, my I don't know what kind of sound system they had in there, but my seats were shaking when he played the piano. I was like, wow, this is crazy. And then like he had the his guitarist was like from ACDC. He had like he put like a super band together type of thing. Yeah. It was really dope. Wow, and that was in uh, that was when well, San Antonio you were saying San Antonio, Texas, and that's close which to is not, Austin. I don't love it. It's about an hour and a half or something. Okay, hour and a half, uh, depending on if you're doing the speed limit or not. Yeah, uh, but uh, San Antonio's nice too. Uh, I was also out in San Antonio for Halloween, which was a little too crazy, and I was like, I'm too old for this. I'm gonna think I'm gonna go back to my hotel and hang out because uh, the streets get the streets got crazy in, in, in Texas on Halloween. The streets got crazy. So I was like, okay, cool. Let me go back to my... If I wanted to do that, I'd come to the Miami and go to the Grove. Like back in the day. Remember oh, Halloween? The Grove. Back in you know, the Halloween was, was yeah, crazy, dog. It was wild. I do, exactly. I do comedy at Taurus in the Grove. And then on Halloween, I was trying to be like, yo, y'all don't even know. I used to come out here in Hellraise. And they're just looking at me like, I remember crazy. Taurus. Yeah, Taurus Comedy Night. It still night. exists, doesn't Bro, it? It's the longest running comedy show. Yeah. It still exists to the yeah, day. Yeah, it still Taurus. exists, Taurus. That place is on and popping, bro. That place is that place is magic. I run the open mic there. I'm gonna be the open mic host now. No shit, I'm gonna go see you yeah. there. I'm gonna go see you. Oh, Congratulations. Yeah, just, just recently, like so. Remember how Freddie was saying it last podcast? Yes. So the my boy Oreo, who's hosting the main show, my boy Dabo is gonna do the main show, and he asked me to do the mic show. So I'm gonna be there every night. Not every night, every Thursday. I'm gonna host the open mic, so I'll get cool. to do ten minutes in the beginning, and I'll bring up all the new guys. Shit, that's awesome, and, man. I gotta go. And yeah. get, and I get paid to fucking do my craft, dog. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So you get a little and bit that's of that's what it's boom. all about. That's what we were talking paid, about before, dog. Getting paid to do your craft. How important is it to value yourself as an artist, right? Where a lot of times in the beginning you got to do it for free, like everything in life, right? But man, I think when you stop doing it for free is when you have enough credits. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you have yeah. a discography and you have something to show, because it's kind of like credits. Why would why sense. would anybody kind of come to pay you for if you're an amateur at something? How do you prove that you're not an amateur at something? Right? Let's say fighting. How many belts do you have? How many fights have you won? How many? Uh, how many? How many artists have a uh, famous artists have you recorded, Brandon? That's a that I can show and go like this. Okay, these are the songs. This is this is this. That's why I'm worth this much. And now you pay me this much. If I came in, I'm just like I make dope beats man you know what i'm saying it's it's hard now i'm not saying that people that don't make dope beats don't get their shots they do i'm just saying with anything just like we're talking about comedy anything business wise you got to show this kind of discography that you probably did some stuff for free we all kind of do in the beginning because we want to do what we need to build a portfolio yeah you know what i'm saying if you're building a portfolio for yourself do you tell the other person hey you got to pay me for to build my portfolio like some people out here are crazy like the artists sometimes they they think that stuff they think they're the the, the greatest thing in the entire world yeah. i try to wake up every day and be like how am i going to be better let me humble myself 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I know that I got it. I know that I'm talented because I've, I, I've, I've sharpened the blade this long. I've actually put the skills towards it. You know what I'm saying? Like, the skill set is there. And I have the talent. But I'm not waking up in the morning like, I'm the best ever. I'm going to do this by myself. Ah, like, you can't do that. You can't do that because those are the people that are going to lose. Yeah. That's a fact because the other people are coming, you know, in a fist like this with five people that are all awesome. You know what I'm saying? They got the, the, the best people. And then you're going to get knocked out because you thought that you were the greatest by yourself. And then you got five greats over here going against you. And it's like, okay, the Working team together. wins. Working together the as team one. won. And also, if you're a team, you can get bigger discography and bigger, you know, faster. So it's like, as a team, we have, when, when you go to uh, get paid or go into the business side of things and go, hey, as a team, we got all these credits. Look at that. Boom. Now it looks mm, even more impressive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if it's just what you did by yourself, how far are we going? Yeah. It's like, I'm not saying it can't be done by yourself. You know? Obviously, you wake up every day by yourself. You know what I'm saying? You look in the mirror by yourself and you do, you, you have to do, you know, love yourself, of course. But I'm saying, you got to be in a team, too. And, and a team really... Is important when it comes to that, and I think credits and discography and stuff like that. It makes to sense. Answer the question. Yeah, it makes sense. Like now, when you say credits, I don't know. I don't understand. Kind of, you kind of put the the like now. I kind of understand like the metaphor behind credits. Like, oh, credits is like your credit, like what you actually did to prove. So that's, that's well, okay. That makes sense. Right. Like when artists say, "Look at my credits," you know, it's like, oh, this is the things I've done. Like the. The work you put in, you know? Right. You got your trophies up here. Yeah. You got your I didn't even realize it. You know what I'm saying? Look, those are yeah. the credits right there, you but, know? But, but, yeah, at the end of the day, when you're about to make a business deal or you're about to do something like that, you want those things to be shown and around. Mm. This is my worth. This is why I'm worth something. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Not because I have nothing and I'm just sitting there telling somebody, hey, or like you would be like, oh, I'm a great fighter. And they're like, oh, yeah? But me, I come in here and I see that and I already know you're a great fighter because you're already... You already explained it to me, you know, just yeah. by having the belts and stuff like that. And I think when you go into business meetings and you're asking people for money and investments, that that shit's important. True. Yeah, it's true, man. Because why would they invest in you then? No, hell yeah. If you want to, what is that saying? If you want to go, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Go together. You know? That's you build right. Build a team, dog. And yes. Agreed. You, you build a team of like-minded individuals, and you can make a lot of things happen, bro. You can take a small country, dog. <laughs> 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 we can take Winterfell, dog. I'll take a small Game of Thrones town with a good team, bro. Yeah. Or even a small island. Fuck yeah, I'm down. Just not Epstein's island, dog. No. <laughs> Speaking of conspiracies, the flight log came out. Oh, man. Yo, my IND wave, that was great, bro. Fuck. Every time this always happens, I'm like, yo, I'm going to try to keep it within an hour, and then we're pushing Where two we hours. At? We're at two hours? Oh. We're at an hour and 40. So. Oh, no. But I'm like, damn, now we're just getting good, too. You know what I'm saying? But, man, what do you got going on right now? So we, uh, anything you're working on right now that you want to plug up before yeah. we start wrapping I mean, up and I'm stuff? I'm working with a lot of stuff with David Corey. He's a pop artist. Um, Hip-hop artists out here out of Miami, Cash, Ivan, Tetris, King Tetris. Ooh. We got a lot of them coming out. Um, my my last two albums are, are still out. It's got Jay Santana on it, Holy Ghost, Christy V, a bunch of artists here from Miami. So oh, nice. the Up Close and Personal and the uh, Away From It All is still out there. Those are the ones that hit the charts. Go listen to those. Um, and everything else that's coming out new is going to be a little surprise. I think I might have another R&B album coming out. Um, but I keep going back and forth with the name of it. And I only have four tracks so far, to be honest. I only have four tracks, but I think I have something good enough um, that I'm excited about it. So, but I'm not gonna announce any of that stuff until a little bit later because it's gonna come out li literally at the end of the year. So, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, other than that, man, I'll just be in the studio recording all the time. You can catch me at Miami Beat Wave on all the Instagram, Twitters, all that stuff, or just go to MiamiBeatWave.com, and from there uh, is the hub to to all the connections with me. Nice man, and there's a vibe. What about for any guys coming up, man? We we, we do this once in a while. Any up and coming producers or songwriters? Anybody wants to get into the industry? Any any uh, what advice would you give like an up and comer? Like let's say there's like a high school kid right now, and he wants to start making music and making beats and producing. What advice would you give that kid in high school right now? If he I wants would to say first off, like uh, um, you know, own your skill, like you know, practice at it every single day, go to work every single day, and like it's it's not gonna it's not gonna be easy. It's not going to be fast like we were talking about before. Uh, it might take some time. For some people, it is fast. You know what I'm saying? But even if you're, if you're dope like and it happens to you fast, you still want to keep uh, owning your skill and, and getting better at it and better at it and better at it. 
Uh, so I would say, first off, work ethic. Uh, I would say, you know, get down to ba making your talent better and better as you can. And then also get so the bright business people on your side before you get screwed over because that's going to happen, you know. So I would say that business, work ethic, and uh, sharpen your blade when it comes to your skill. Sharpen the blade. Yeah. You got to be the 10,000 hours. That's the yeah. one we always say. You got to get that you mastery. Go. You know? That's what they say. 10,000 hours or 10 years. One or the other. Yeah, yeah. Whatever comes first. Whatever you know what I'm comes saying? first. That's exactly. what it is, baby. 10,000 hours. That's the goal, dog. That's the key to mastery. You know, do anything. If you want to get good at something, you got to do it for free for fucking at least 5,000 of them Agreed. bitches, dog. You I know agree. what I'm saying? I agree completely. Yo, Brandon, that was amazing. I really appreciate you coming on the podcast, Thank man. You for that was a me fucking on. great chat, yes, bro. Of course. Hey, any artists and people you want to send through the the studio, let me know, bro. You got some um, albums, albums you want me to bro, just shoot me a message. I don't really know too much about your scene and the game, but if you got some dope people that want to spit some balls I will. or come on I'm down, I'm and down. Promote your stuff, bro. I'll start sending them to you. All your people got a home on the Honey Badger Hour. Any music artists, I want to fucking elevate my Thank peoples. You, man. I moved to y'all. I was living overseas in Asia for like 10 years. I was starting the podcast there and i wanted to move back to miami and i'm so glad i got to talk to you because i want to talk to guys like you like ivan artists yes you know grinders people who are doing this entrepreneurship bro it's hard it's a world it's not the business industry where like you get a job and a promotion so i know you, you know talking, what i'm saying I, I know what you're saying so i love talking to you guys and learning about new people and stories man so uh, yeah thank you for having me on man G. I'm happy. Hell yeah that was awesome yes ladies and gentlemen honey badger hour i don't even know what episode it is miami beat wave we're out